Okay. You just make sounds in your head and then you rewind time. That's how that works. As I was saying, this. All right? We're going to go with magic is fucking real. Welcome, Sarah. The Palisade, you said earlier, this is probably from that comic where everything's crazy. Yeah, you're, you're very much right. This is the, the comic that is very much crazy. I don't know if anybody here even fucking remembers when we did um, Hive Swap. I'm sure that Calvin knows we did Hive Swap. But I'll just show you, you know. These are some of the gifts that come from various things related to this world. <laughs> um, kind of from all over the place. Those are very tame. Very, very tame. One of my favorite things was a gif of just a guy flipping, oh, like flipping out in a box and saying, yelling, shouting, screaming, this is stupid. And it, it is. Everything is stupid. <laughs> Everything is stupid. I was here for Hive Swap. But I don't know if I can explain it. Yeah. That's that's about right. No, my favorite character was that luscious bitch with the hair in the top left up there. I hope Lonk comes back. Pest Request is supposedly a sequel to Hive Swap Friend Sim. Not the Hive Swaps on the train with the Joey, but the Friend Sim where we did the this. Which is why we're in the green room. Remember at the end of the Hive Swap? When there was the guy with the cue ball for a head, and he's like, Oh, I'm just, here you go. I, I, here's how I explain all well, the fuck you just went through. Sit down and read Homestuck. Hi, this is Avatar, continuing to read Homestuck. It's... <laughs> Don't worry about the music. It's supposed to be really wonky. <laughs> is it too loud? <laughs> It's been a long time coming. You click to the last page of the Homestuck epilogues. You read it, then you read it again. You scroll down to go to the next section and find nothing. The little blue arrow you crave is nowhere to be found. What the fuck? Are you serious? What kind of ending was that? Absolutely nothing got resolved. This is true, by the way. The epilogue, I've loved everything that they write out of this, but wow, they leave you on cliffhangers a fucking lot, including at quote unquote endings. <laughs> Why, is there so much Why you stand up so fast your chair falls over? Jesus Christ are you steamed. Maybe eventually with further thought, you'll come to the come to appreciate the thematic elements and contributions to narrative convention. But as of right now, you need to understand. What happened to Dead John? What about Rose and Kanaya and their marriage? What about Terezi and Friska? <laughs> God, you have to have words with someone. Stomping out of the little computer room, you blink a few times, trying to readjust to the dim parlor after staring at a screen for so long. Doc Scratch? Where's that creepy round motherfucker? You sure got his number now. You know all about how he ruined the lives of eight human kids and twelve trolls, how he played everybody, including you! At the very least, he owes you a satisfying conclusion to this story. You. You. March confidently down the hall in the direction of a sudden ruckus. Turning the corner, you see two figures. One is definitely Doc Scratch. The other is a dark silhouette in a fashionable hat and coat. While you watch, the latter begins to hit the former with a cane. Oh, God damn it! You know what's happening. You know some lore. You need to get out of here before this place goes up in flames. Survive now. <laughs> Yell about unsatisfactory narratives later. <laughs> I do. I know exactly what is happening in this moment. <laughs> He's me. With that in mind, you leave behind this ridiculous altercation, trampling a pile of notes and photographs underfoot as you make a run for the fenestrated wall. See ya, suckers! You sail through feet first, racing for the smell of overturned earth in the side of the... Handling a man a turtle! I don't want Doc Scratch to be a turtle. <laughs> I don't want that to be the case. You sail through feet first, bracing for the smell of overturned earth and the sight of the twin Alternian moons. Man, it's gonna be good to see your friends again, especially now that you're armed with all of this canon knowledge. <sighs> right, this guy thinks he <clears throat> he's going backwards into the friend sim era to go back to all of his friends. But what surrounds you is not Fazer's corpse field. It's a whole lot of nothing. Are you lost between worlds or something? Wait, no, you see a glimmer in the distance, a bright white light, swallowing down the surge of panic, you move toward it. <gasps> the light coalesces into the form of a small symbolic house. 
Hey, you recognize this house? I do. It's on my keychain up there. That's the one. I don't know what that button does. <laughs> I'm scared to hit it. Alright, that's a log. <clears throat> I wonder if you can just sort of... Oh, okay. Well, you did that. A barrage of images hits you. Poppy, not born yesterday. <laughs> but not much more long ago than yesterday, so not really understand. Yeah, it's okay, Poppy. Nobody really understands this... ...narrative. <laughs> it's not just because you are born yesterday. I've been reading it for over ten years. Broken, chaotic flashes, too fractured to make sense of. You just stuck your hand into the most powerful item in the whole of this narrative, and your body is not taking it well. Right, sizzling pain hits the nerve centers of your brain and radiates out to the extremities. Wow, you are a moron! You aren't a comic character. You aren't meant for this sort of metatextual energy. It hurts, it burns, it unravels you from the inside out, and then everything goes... white. <laughs> Yay, error. What a lovely morning. <laughs> I was here for Hive Swap. I don't know if I can explain it. The date with the clown man. Nope, no dates with clown man. Gonna ignore them clown men. Clown men don't exist in this world anymore. They're all dead. Literally, I have to keep checking to see what's going on in the game. It was just Ryan's commentary. <laughs> Homestuck is like that pretty fast at reading out loud. I have to be. I have done a lot of text <laughs> on these streams before. Sometimes you have to experience something to understand it. Uh-huh. Yep, that's that's this franchise. I've gotten asked if I like Homestuck like twice. Apparently I look like a Homestuck. You have that energy, Mimo. Yeah, 100%. understand that. <clears throat> What a lovely morning. The air is fresh and crisp. It's early spring, probably. You find yourself on the sidewalk in a suburban neighborhood, facing a neat, friendly house. A neat, friendly boy stands at the window on the second floor looking down at you. At least, you hope he's friendly. Um... <clears throat> uh... Any questions <laughs> to start off with? <laughs> weed, weed, weed. You probably just went through the least sensical part of this whole thing, at least for the next hour. <sighs> yeah. That was a whole lot of, yeah, stuff that's relying on previous knowledge to make sense of. You don't have to really un- what, what I've- what the disclaimer when I opened the game told me is that you don't have to have read everything to understand everything? Or to like, enjoy it all, but you might miss some references, so don't worry about that. <clears throat> Excuse me, goodness. I should also get some actual water, not just coffee. Okay, let's continue. Man, you would really love to be his friend. At first you think the boy is looking at you, but instead he appears to be looking at the mailbox. Which is stuffed so full that the door is half open. Looks like someone crammed a whole box in here. Helpfully, you pull it out, along with a couple of coupons and envelopes stamped with a green symbol. You go to give the boy a thumbs up, but he's no longer at the window. Um, yeah, this, this, Writing style says you. It's second person. The person in the narrative 
that is being talked about is you. That's how it Adam, works. Adam, you dumbass! <laughs> Pay attention! <laughs> yes, boy in the window. Any, everybody in the chat right now is Adam. Hold up, this is very critical information. Ah, <sighs> memory prickles at the corner of your awareness. You feel like you've maybe done this before? While you're standing there ruminating, you want to do a flip? Ira comes by. <laughs> Skateboarding, doing backflips, riding down the sidewalk. A car pulls up. The driver's wearing a hat and a suit and is probably the owner of this house and the father of that friendly boy. Oh shit, you're just standing out here with all of his mail. He thinks you're going to rob the thing, the, the place. Hide the evidence! <laughs> Quick as you can, you turn around and dump everything in the sewer. <laughs> Whatever. It was probably all garbage anyway. Who even uses their mailbox these days? The friendly and fatherly figure parks his car, <laughs> climbs out, and tips his hat at you. Then he walks into the house, not sensing a single thing amiss. The perfect crime. Oh, but here comes the boy out the front door. God, you hope he wasn't coming down for the mail. You're infringing my copyright! These Xenoblade quotes are going to be even harder than normal to work into the middle of sentences. <laughs> A residential boy approaches. I forgot he has the fucking Groucho mask. Ugh. <laughs> Wait a minute, this is not the same boy as you saw peeking through the window. It is possibly not a boy at all. It appears to be a mysterious gentleman. The luxurious mustache. You wonder what business this fine, upstanding neighborhood gentleman would have of you. Hey! <laughs> I saw you standing out here messing with the mailbox. I figured you might be the mailman. Even though you're not wearing the mailman outfit. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's you. You're definitely the mailman. Your outfit is, um, it's in the, the laundry today. Yeah, you're just wearing your mailman hoodie instead. See this symbol? It's the symbol of, uh, mail. You are wearing a hoodie that a troll from the previous game gave you because the fancy pants rich man's bathrobe that you were wearing before got totally covered in slime. Alright, there, there's your uh, <laughs> missing info. <laughs> Nothing stops the mail. <laughs> That's great. I guess it is uh, true after all that mailmen are completely relentless in their quest to deliver people's mail. You guys are incredible. Speaking of mail, do you know if I got any today? What? No! Red package? No, we haven't seen anything like that. No bills, no junk mail, nothing at all. The mailbox was empty when you looked inside. I didn't say anything about a red package. Should I be expecting one? Come to think of it, it is my birthday, so getting a package in the mail would make sense. And if it's red, then it probably means it's from Dave. He loves red because I guess it's cool? Handling a magic turtle! <laughs> Why? Why is there so many turtles today? Oh man, I wonder what he got me. <clears throat> nothing. He got you nothing, you say. Isn't he listening? This Dave fellow probably forgot uh, his birthday due to being a bad friend, and that's why there's no package, red or otherwise. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, I'm uh, just kidding, you say. You sure, Dave is a great friend who cares about this kid a lot, maybe. His presence probably just late and definitely not slowly sinking in a subterranean river of shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not what that's a stra strange thing to say are you sure you don't know more about Dave's present than you're telling me <clears throat> no you say absolutely not actually he should forget about what you said about the present uh, being late he should not be expecting a red package. Not now, not ever. He should trust you, because all mailmen know everything about the mail. These houses look too normal for trolls. It, uh, Calvin, can you not see? What are we looking at right now? This is clearly not a troll. Thus, it's okay. Dang. So, nothing else? Huh? You said the box was empty? I don't think I understand. Isn't that how it always is when you deliver mail? I mean, you're the guy who's supposed to put stuff in there. Yes, that's right. You're the mailman. The absolute authority over all mail, which means your word must be accepted without question when it comes to the mail he didn't get today. <laughs> you double-checked at everything. You looked thoroughly through your mailbag for anything with this kid's name on it and came up empty. Sorry, dude. You have a mailbag? Where is it? 
Oh, uh, that old thing. You dropped it in the sewer before the boy came inside, came outside. Oh, that sucks. All that mail ruined. I think I can help you fish it out. No, that's fine. No, thanks for offering. Fine, young Samaritan. But, um, the government will handle this. There's, like, insurance and such for sewer-related postal mishaps. That makes sense, but what if you missed something in there for me? Like, a game envelope or such? Are you totally sure you didn't miss something? Yes, you are sure. You triple-checked, and you didn't see his name on anything. Besides, it's really rank down there. Very sewery. All that mail has been befouled beyond any hope of salvaging it. Really, it's best not to even bother peeking inside. You're probably right, but... How do you know... Wait. How do you know there was any mail for me if you don't know my name? What? Oh, God damn it! Huh? Oh, you mean, of course, you know his name. Mailmen are sort of like Santa Claus. They know the names for all the good little boys on their delivery routes. Yes, obviously, you... Jeff? Wait, okay, that sounded creepy. You really regret phrasing it like that. It was so completely unnecessary. You just know a lot of stuff as an important government official with lots of bureaucratic lists and such. For instance, the name of this young man is... Damn, why do you always paint yourself into corners like this? <laughs> All you're trying to do is make a new friend and somehow you manage to bullshit your way through the absolute most challenging version of this conversation possible. Ah! <laughs> uh... Big, big mood. Okay, you guys. The young man's name is... <sighs> How I really could be anything. You might as well have given, been given a random ass name. This very day, shortly before you arrived, for all you know. <laughs> You'll just have to go with your gun. Get let out. <sighs> oh. <clears throat> see, 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 the joke is that... <laughs> four score and seven years ago, about, maybe, when this whole... Thing began, the first few pages were about giving this kid a name. <laughs> oh god, it is, it, this is gonna be a lot more memory lane than the past one was, wasn't it? His name is Steve, wait, no, he's making a bad face, you're on the wrong track. Oh, he's perking up, oh, this is good. G no bad face. <laughs> it's not Jimmy. Um, um, um Jim Jillian? That that's not even a name. Uh, in any anyway. Uh, John. Yeah, he likes that. John. B. John. John. Bremmy. <laughs> Shit. He looks disgusted. Abort. John Bremmy. <laughs> you really can be quite the fucking idiot sometimes. <laughs> John Jer Jerson. John Jerson? Wait, he looked pleased for a minute, then it looked like he just sucked on a lemon. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you were bad at this. <laughs> Play playing fucking hot cold with a linear text box. <laughs> John. 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 Der John. Der built? Yikes, no. Ah, you got it. It's just John. Yes, of course. <laughs> you don't know what you're even thinking. Yes, you do. Those are just goofs you explained to John. Mailmen love goofs. <laughs> oh, that's that's a meta joke I didn't even realize. <laughs> that is <laughs> the subtitle to Homestuck. Oh, that's a meta joke. I didn't I didn't get it. It's just all of Homestuck. <clears throat> Ugh. Ugh. Mailman love goofs. His name is John. You say confidently as if you had it in the bag all along. No, not your non-existent mailbag, which you told me you dropped at the sewer. Your real bag, where the good shit is. Such as your incredible ability to guess someone's name in five or six tries. That's right! Wow, I guess it's true then. Mailmen really do know practically everything. You smile, finally. Just like this friendship may be starting to click. It was rocky there for a while, as you had to spin an intricate, nearly flawless web of lies to smooth over the fact that you destroyed his cherished personal property. Chibi, what are you doing? 
but you're pretty sure you're in the clear now and you'll never have to justify yourself to him ever again. Well, as nice as it is to meet you, Mr. Mailman, to be honest, this just kind of sucks. I've been waiting for a really cool game to arrive in the mail, but it's been a few days already, and now I'm starting to think it got lost? It might just never come now, and I'm kind of bummed about it. I had some hope it would show up on my birthday as, like, present? Nobody, really. A present out of thin air, I guess. Like it was going to be destiny or something? Oh, well. I guess magic really is fake as all the scientists say it is. Oh, shit, no! No, magic is fucking real! That's the title of the chapter, we gotta do it! <laughs> you nod along very wisely. Oh yes, you say, you can kiss that game goodbye. It definitely got lost in the mail, and it is never, ever going to be delivered. The Postmaster General just told you a few seconds ago, uh, through your uh, wireless earpiece, which is hooked up to the US parcel mainframe. You tell John he is right to disbelieve in magic. It's fake as shit. It's time for him to get used to the idea that he will never play this game, whatever it was. It was probably stupid anyway. Most games are. No, Chibi, it's okay. There's no way you could have fricked up as hard as uh, everybody in chat is together. Because everybody in this game is you. And everybody fucked up this game. Stole this guy's mail, threw it in the sewer, and then failed at guessing his name in an incredibly terrible way like six times. <laughs> Turning on emote only mode is, is minor compared to all the fuck ups that uh, you have just perpetuated in the past 20 minutes. <clears throat> you should try to get used to whatever kind of life he's gonna live from now on in the absence of this dumb video game. Yeah, you're right. I think I got too worked up about it. It probably does suck actually. I think Gamer only gave it like two hats out of five hats? It might have been even less than that. God, what a piece of shit it probably was. You know, I think I have to thank you, Mr. Mailman. You really opened my eyes today. I'm gonna forget I ever heard of that dumb game and just try to enjoy life. Talk to my friends, hang out in my room, and uh, I don't know. Come to think of it, maybe I was looking forward to playing that game with my friends so much because I'm lonely? I'm almost a little embarrassed to admit, I don't actually have any real life friends. Oh, this is it. This is your inn. This nice boy seems to be jonesing for friendship just as much as you are, and you've laid all the groundwork for becoming his best bro so expertly. You just need to slide right into his life with a few more sympathetic remarks. You actually have a lot of experience with this by now. You've made so many friends in so many strange places and with many mixed results. Or, wait, do you think you did? You can't conjure up any of their names or faces right now. That there, there, there was a letter. There, there was a letter, like at L L L. There's a few faces y that you can think of that are associated with L. A blue and a green one, and you just remember both of them made you weak in the knees. You stare off into space for the next twenty minutes while uh, Jomberbilt decides that you've probably entered into a catatonic state and goes back inside of his house and. <laughs> Abandons you on the lawn. <clears throat> it probably isn't important. Actually, let's never speak of that again. <laughs> what matters most is you're here now, making a sweet new pal named John. You casually mentioned that this is the end of your mail route, and you don't have much else going on in your life right now or ever. Maybe you and he can hang out for a while, if he doesn't mind, that is. Wanna hang out with me? Just, like... Just a mailman and a 13-year-old boy, just... Being buddies? You shrug a little, as if you don't care much. But you really, really care. Normally I'd say that sounds a little strange. Maybe slightly inappropriate? <laughs> but what do I know? If you were a normal-looking mailman, that would probably be a shitty idea, and I'd get in trouble with my dad or the authorities or something. And probably so would you. But you seem different. Like, maybe you weren't even a person? Just kind of a weird, harmless-looking guy? Like an alien. But not really? You don't know what to say to any of this. Nice! <laughs> nice! He thinks I'm an alien. Yes, I'm in. Oh man, I'm being fucking rude. I'm so sorry. Yeah, of course we can hang out, but maybe we should, uh, keep this sort of a secret from my dad. I don't know if he'd approve of me bringing a stranger into the house, even if you are very nice and sincerely concerned about my male problems. That sounds fine with you. Now that you think about it, you still aren't sure his dad didn't see you dumping all their mail into the sewer. He probably did? 
Otherwise, he would have had some words with you shortly. But still, it's a risk you shouldn't be taking under these delicate circumstances. There's a friendship on the line. Okay, I'm glad you agree. It sounds like we have a sneaky mission ahead of us. Actually, it sounds like it could be fun. It does sound fun, except maybe slightly triggering, since you've done a lot of dangerous high-stakes sneaking in the past you can't quite remember. But still fun, mostly fun. You, you can't wait. Yeah. So, how should we do this? We could either sneak upstairs to my bedroom while avoiding my dad, or just hang out and just hang out up there for a nice. while. Nice! Or if that sounds too risky, we could just stay outside. I got some sweet playground equipment in the backyard. What'll it be? Oh, somebody make a call. I don't know. Like, I just, I worked on instinct when it gave me the option to throw all of his hard-earned mail in the sewer, but this time I want to actually think about it. Playground it is! <laughs> Actually, you tell John you think the fresh air out here will do some good. That playground equipment he mentions really sweetens the pot. You hope he doesn't mind. After all, as a mailman, you were meant to be outdoors. You took a mailman's oath and everything. So, uh, yeah, John will probably believe that. Sure, no problem. I totally understand. It gets really stuffy in there, especially with all the baking my dad does. We can hang out in my yard. Feels like it's been ages since I took a spin on the old pogo ride. Pogo ride, he says? <gasps> it's the skateboarding backflipper again. <laughs> that just seals the deal. You bow flamboyantly and gesture for him to lead the way. But you quickly regret doing that because it was a little much. Well, here it is. My backyard in all its glory. I want to think about it, Ryan says. He takes me yelling about playgrounds like gospel. <laughs> Nah, it seems like everybody's on the same page here. Unanimously, the playground was a ghost idea. I hardly ever come out here anymore, honestly. There's a old trusty swing set. Ah, bring me back some good memories. And there's the pogo ride. You better hop on before I beat you to it. <laughs> Just kidding, the thing's a death trap. You should really go nowhere near that thing, unless you like dying. Oblivious to the humorous nature of his remark, you shake your head solemnly. Oh no, you say. You're pretty sure dying sucks, and you never want to do it again. Why does this remind me of Homestuck? I don't know, Annie Kiki. Maybe it's the fact that fucking John is front and center. <laughs> Literally in the middle of the screen. Was that a sarcastic joke? <laughs> Just the main fucking protagonist. <laughs> Center framed. Ugh. Oblivious to the humorous nature of his remark. Yeah, shake your head solemnly. That's 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 a weird thing to say. Are you saying you've died before? Or is this some sort of weird mailman joke? Oh, ha ha, yeah. You, you mailman like to joke around a lot. Sometimes very darkly. It gets very stressful delivering the mail sometimes. And sometimes you just need to blow off some steam by making light of your mortality and, uh... It doesn't seem like this is going over well. To be fair, it is one of your worst explanations so far, and that's really saying something. You start to falter and lose composure. You don't seem to have it in you to follow through with the lie. You stop talking and... and your head. Hey, what's wrong? <laughs> you decide to tell him the truth. Laughs like maniacal. Yeah, th that... yeah. Never played either. Is that the prequel? Homestuck? That is a webcomic. <clears throat> kind of. That's the closest term there is to describe it. And yeah, it's about the characters in this game. <laughs> Hive Swap was, was a Kickstarter game from this thing that has more stories to it. God, every single thing about this fucking franchise is hard to describe. <laughs> Maybe today we'll get to this character, Rose. <laughs> BB. Hi, King. What's up? <clears throat> so you decide to tell him the truth. Yes, you've been dead before. Possibly a bunch of times. You're not sure. Actually, you can't remember any of the circumstances surrounding your death. It's plural. And you aren't even sure who you are. Frankly, you're a little confused by your own existence sometimes. 
Ryan, just tell us to read it ourselves and then become very concerned when we actually read it. Nobody has ever followed through on my uh, suggestions to read it, you know? it's I And I can't blame them for it. It's, aside from fan fiction, the longest piece of English literature in existence. I am not kidding. <laughs> It has fucking games and flash animations to it. It has albums upon albums of fan-made music. It was a very unique thing during its heyday. But if you read it, yo, come join me in the slime pit. <laughs> <clears throat> You're confused by your own existence. Oh no. Well, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a little hard to believe. But I'll listen to what you have to say anyway, because that's what friends are for. How did that happen? Oh, well... You cast your mind back as hard as you can. You really give it a good hard think. You remember a room and a computer screen and just this really intense feeling of frustration? A computer screen? I don't... I mean, I get very... being frustrated at your computer screen. I do that every day. Yeah, he gets it. It's written all over his face. This is the boy who feels your pain. He's following you perfectly. I'm not really following. <laughs> Can you explain how you ended up in the afterlife? Afterlife? You're pretty sure it was the afterlife? Maybe heaven? It was a little too freaky for heaven. But you were alone? And then you found a mysterious artifact on the ground. You found a mysterious artifact... in hell? Yeah. It was white and flat and lying on the ground, as if it was waiting for you. Or waiting for someone else, maybe. But you found it first by accident? You find it hard to believe you were destined for any cursed treasure such as this. Perhaps the artifact belonged to Lucifer himself. Ow. You didn't realize you said the Lucifer thing out loud? Maybe you should consider reeling this in a bit. You're beginning to wonder if you're coming off as a little unhinged here. Except John is clearly transfixed by your story and looking a little concerned. You guess there's no going back now. You committed yourself to the truth as insane as it sounds. So you saw something weird. It looks like a little house. Obvious thing to do is stick your hand inside the house. That's that what you did. Then you felt funny and teleported out of hell. That's how you ended up here on Earth. Where uh, you became a mailman. And then you decided to have a long and rewarding career of delivering the mail. And then you met John. And now you're basically best friends at the end. This all sounds pretty fucked up. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? You're right back to feeling like a crazy person again. He probably doesn't believe you? It seems like you're gonna have to take this even further, or risk eroding the foundation of trust this blossoming friendship is built on. You mentioned that you're pretty sure the Devil's Treasure gave you some magic powers. <laughs> magic powers? Like what? You're not sure. You could sort of teleport now. Also, you're pretty sure you can time travel. You haven't tested it out much, you admit. Teleportation and time travel. That's a lot. You can prove it, you say desperately. Suddenly, it feels like this friendship is hanging on by a thread and you'll do anything to preserve it. It's time to bring out the big guns. The revelation to this boy that, contrary to all known scientific wisdom, magic is far from fake. It is real as shit. What the hell? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you? Hello. I've been introducing some new people to the magic that is an alternate retelling of the opening of this story. <laughs> Wait, but he's not in his room. Or yeah. is this his room? Alternate telling. We diverted him from his room. Oh no, that means he's gonna die. <laughs> Shit. Let's make a fuck with timelines. This is the opening also, of The Homestuck? Yes! The opening of The Homestuck was this giving this kid a name, and the mail came, but we, you, you, sorry, you, just found his mail and threw it in the trash. Thus, we're in an alternate timeline. <laughs> Fuck me, I'm reading Homestuck now. For instance, you remind That's him that you, you, you both almost went up to his bedroom, but decided not to because the trek across the house was too risky. But what if you could just teleport there? Um, <clears throat> sounds like a handy trick. I'm guessing this that is all sounds bullshit. like a crime. <laughs> this is all bullshit, though, like a prank. That's okay, though. I love pranks. Of course, I mean, he does. Thank you, Fur. It's one of his like. <laughs> oh, hey, for the prime stuff. <laughs> what? The... <laughs> what? I forgot that you posted that in the mod room, but I didn't know you'd finished it. <laughs> I didn't finish it. That's the original version. That's the sloppy version. I'm, oh, I'm making okay. a better version. <laughs> Oh, damn, there's a better version? Yeah, oh, no. better version. 
It's it's, it's gonna uh-huh. have proper lighting and like hands that don't clip through her legs. <laughs> Just get rid of the legs. But but it's no prank. At least you think you've never actually tested this power at all. God, you hope you don't end up making a fool of yourself. Everything is riding on this. Hey, what are you? Here goes nothing. <gasps> Zap. <laughs> Wait, what? Is that you? Yeah, that's you. So, uh, MTT, here's the thing. Um, right at the beginning, uh, I, d- did you play Friend Sim or were you, were you with me for the end of Friend Sim? Yes, remember, I remember the end. Remember, oh. remember how character got uh, put into the green room with Doc Scratch? Right. This oh. one, this one started with being in that room, finishing reading Homestuck, having a whole like calling out all of the bullshit and how nothing ended properly, and then you found the house and stuck your hand in it, and now we have John's teleportation powers. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking like I, I saw that and I was like, wait, I remember that hoodie from from pet from Friend Sim, and I was. I didn't realize this was literally a direct sequel to Friends. <laughs> this is yeah. so stupid. I love yeah. this. Holy shit. I used my thinking muscles for this one. <laughs> no, you didn't, Lance. No, you did not use your thinking muscles. There is no thinking muscles in Homestuck. You're gonna break your muscles if you try. I forgot he had a Mac and me and poster and shit. What the fuck? What is that one Remember over there? Con Air? <laughs> Oh god, I can never forget <laughs> Con Air. How can I live without you? The bunny uh, in the Put the box. bunny in the box! <laughs> it worked! Unbelievable! You know what this means, Mr. Mailman? You shake your head. It means magic is fucking real! You shrug. You guess it is. You won't admit it, but all you really care about right now is the fact that you saved the friendship. It should all be smooth sailing from here. It's a pretty good thing I met you, because if you didn't show up, I'm pretty sure that nothing anywhere close to this being- be- Nothing anywhere close to being this incredible would ever have happened to me if you didn't show up and throw my mail in the trash. Oh, John. Oh, John. You consider that remark for a moment and decide you absolutely agree. You are definitely the best and most exciting thing that will ever happen to this kid. Jesus Christ. Also, he drew a little smiley face on his birthday on the calendar. I, he, he did, he did. Yeah. You also said something about time travel? Can we try that too? Or would that be too disruptive to the space-time continuum? You have him eating out of the palm of your hand Adam, now. you dumbass! <laughs> Pay attention! <laughs> okay. Hey, Ryan. Okay. Hi. Yeah? Yeah? See, I, I get CJ tossing fucking... Handling a magic turtle. Again, we had like four fucking turtles this morning. I got people that keep tossing like Xenoblade quotes in the middle of everything else I'm trying to do. <laughs> oh, thank you for the dollar fur. You have him eating out of the palm of your hand now. No need to slow this train down. Continuum, shmuntinuum, whatever your new friend wants, he gets. Here, have a room full of turtles. I know. Why don't we just go back in time by about a week? And we can stay right here. That way we won't risk messing up anything important. Sure, that makes sense. You get ready to use your new hell power and concentrate as hard as you can on the idea of one week ago. That's probably how it works. Zap. Hmm, not much changed. Except, wait. The cakes are gone! That must mean it isn't my birthday yet, which means... uh, It worked! This is one week ago! Yeah, wow! (laughs) Uh, Oh, for fuck's sake. I forgot, of course. There was gonna be a past me in the room a week ago. (laughs) Oh, whoops! This is chapter one. He's been, stu- he's this- been stuck in his room for a week? This is chapter one. <laughs> Does he not leave his room? Does he no. not have school? No! Remember, MDT, he is stuck at home. What? Obviously. What, like his entire life? <laughs> Obviously. Okay. God, I'm such an idiot. This is going to fuck things up, isn't it? <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Whatever it is, it seems really stupid. You're right, John, it is stupid. Sorry, I wasn't using my head. Don't worry, we'll get out of your hair. Hey, quick, let's zap out to the yard so we fuck up space time as little as possible. <laughs> Woo! Well, that was dumb. Maybe let's try to avoid abusing your time travel power from now on. It could really lead to a lot of messy bullshit. You wholeheartedly agree. Mm-hmm. All you really want to do is make friends, not clown around through space time. Nope, sorry. I guess we're still a week in the past. But now just standing in my yard doing nothing? 
This seems pointless. We should probably head back to the present. You nod. It was an interesting experiment, and it brought you a lot of credibility. But it's time to... Wait a minute. Something is wrong. There's a slight buzzing in the air. You can feel it. What's the matter? Let's begin the experiment. No. No, we don't. <laughs> Space-time continuum experiments are bad. Klaus, you should know this. You blew up two universes. Well, I mean, sorry, you blew up one universe. What did universe. he say? You, I, I got the sound clip that said, let's begin the experiment. Oh, Jesus, what? no. Uh, Stop being wrong. Um, and I'm like, well, you, you blew up one universe and created two, um, but that's still less than what had than what happened in the universe we're in now, or what will happen. It kind of fixed itself. <laughs> I'm slow, hang on. And that's all I'll Homestuck say. Homestuck means he's stuck at home, that's why it's called Homestuck, despite them being in universes, I should stop thinking. Don't yep. question it, Mimo. <laughs> Just... Go for the ride. Mm-hmm. You have to hide. Um, okay. You and John dash into a neighbor's yard and hide behind the fence. You peek in the backyard to see what's happening. Suddenly, you see it. That energy I'm really feeling it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait. A whole group of teenagers randomly teleporting into John's backyard. Fuck. Oh, God. You examine them more closely. They're all dressed in ridiculous, colorful outfits. Is the circus in town? There seems to be a lot of clowns in John's house. Maybe this house is some kind of globally recognized headquarters for traveling clowns. But they're not really clowns. Just teens, wearing strange pajama-looking clothes. Eight of them, to be precise. Hmm. Oh. See, like, that could mean many things. That's the thing. <laughs> that doesn't narrow it down at all. <laughs> I think I know who these kids are. I do too, but I'm like, are these like normal colors or like vibrant pastel colors? Because there's a vital difference there. They did say very colorful outfits, so I'm guessing we're, we're looking at the pastel types. Oh boy. On closer inspection, one of them seems familiar. The guy in the blue pajamas. You think it's your new friend John, but he seems older. Okay. Definitely not a 13-year-old kid like your buddy here. None of them are. They all appear to... Settle in for a while to talk amongst themselves. The guy in the yellow speedo gets down to business on the pogo ride, totally oblivious to its dangers. What the fuck? Jake, what the fuck? Ah! <laughs> also, like, wait. Rex scream. Rex shows up and just yells in the middle of the new party. <laughs> there just seems to be a serious atmosphere hanging over this group of teens. Important discussions are happening. It's completely baffling to you and by the look on your buddy's face to John as well. Suddenly, suddenly, an uneasy feeling settles over you, like you're witnessing something that was never meant to be seen by anyone. Perhaps a rendezvous point established by this group of teens for exactly that reason, that no one would think to be watching this quiet suburban backyard right now. Should you stay and listen or go? You're not sure what to do. You can't shake the feeling that something highly inappropriate is happening here just by watching, like you're beholding a moment so divorced from an authoritarian chain of events, from an authoritative chain of events, that to even witness this moment is not only narratively compromising, but extremely cursed. Sorry, did I say your, Is like, voice, your, like, talk speed to 1.25 by accident? <laughs> There's no British accent just yet. Wait, there is a British accent. Fucking Jake! <laughs> yeah. Is that guy in the blue pajamas me? You pat John in the back. You can only imagine what's going through his head right now. He hasn't seen a time travel duplicate of himself in, well, minutes. Minutes. <laughs> Man, I look so much older. What am I even wearing? And how are all these people? Wait, wait. I know some of them. It's Rose and Dave them. and Jade with dog ears? <laughs> I don't know the others, though. Wait, I know what's going on. They must be from the future! This is the only explanation, especially since we just did some try and travel ourselves, thus proving magic to be real. Did you have something to do with this, Mr. Mailman? You shake your head. You are just as surprised by this nonsense as he is. It seems one or more people from this group have somehow obtained some similar abilities offered by the hell treasure you touched. I guess Wait, you said you read home stuff, so shouldn't you know who they are? Yeah, but then going through the Hell House seems to have fucked up the memory a little bit. I've already forgotten all of the friends that happened in the previous games. Oh, well... I guess well. they're all from a few years in the future, where we're all a bunch of older, cooler teenagers. Maybe we all go to college together or something. Hmm. Maybe that's where we make these four new friends. There's something familiar yeah. about them, but I can't put my finger on it. But why do we look so ridiculous? Did I join a troop of traveling street performers that's following in the footsteps of my father? <laughs> Just because you read something doesn't mean you know what they look like. No, Homestuck has many visuals. Uh -huh. like, very 
unwelcome visuals sometimes. <laughs> and somehow I managed to rope everyone in on the act, including Dave and Rose, who almost certainly would think the idea is really stupid, even though it's clearly great and cool, while somehow also involving time travel. I don't know. I'm so confused. What are they even doing here? Did this really happen just outside my house one week ago without me knowing about it at all? What else have I been missing? How much more is there to know about the future events of me and my friends, which has been taking place in secret like this? I wonder if there's a lot more to my life than I ever could have imagined. Actually, I should probably be thanking you? If you hadn't told me my game got lost in the mail, I might have gotten way too hung up on it. That might have totally altered the trajectory of my life. Then I wouldn't get to go on whatever sweet adventures happen in the future that'll lead me to wear a bunch of silly pajamas that apparently speak with great authority in front of a very group- this- in front of a group of very cool teens. You bow your head contemplatively as if to say you're welcome. You're welcome for your entire life and every cool thing that ever happens to you from now on. <laughs> After some time passes, the group of teens seems to finish up whatever business they had in the yard and disappear into thin air. You guess that's the end of whatever that was. Since there isn't much point to staying here a week in the past, you decide to return John to the present moment. Zap. That was interesting. We were a little too far away to hear what they were saying. I think I kept overhearing the word English? I wonder if some of those teens speak a foreign language. Was, was oh I, yes, <laughs> English. Was, was I teaching them English? <laughs> this sure is some sp shitty speculation. It makes no sense at all. I guess the only thing to do is wait until I become that John and then find out for myself. Sounds exciting, but also a little overwhelming. I'm going to need to think about this. He watches John spaces out for a solid minute, thinking about his absurd future. You glance towards that swing set, wondering if the fun times John had planned for you are going to continue to recede further into the distance as he comes to grips with his mysterious destiny. <laughs> You cough a little to snap him out of his stupor. Now, I'm sorry, Mr. Mailman. I know I said we'd do something fun, but time travel and seeing future versions of ourselves is really fucking boring, isn't it? Now I think I'm in kind of an existential mood? I should take a walk and think about what happened today. you weird. It's nothing personal. I just need some space. See ya. <laughs> All right. We talked for 45 minutes and failed. <laughs> Babe. <laughs> this <is such> a <laughs> gross. <laughs> Oh god, I forgot how long these can go after your two choices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Damn, you look so s You look so sad and you look so confused. <laughs> okay. 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 Where's my water? I need- I need to actually get some. You could be- uh, you just talk to the chat for a second. Okay. Hi chat, how are you? And there's one second gone. Okay, fine. Wait, how do I actually turn on the chat? There you go. <laughs> That's how you make friends! That's a win, right? It's a... win of sorts. Making a kid suffer from existential crisis is a win in my eyes. <laughs> Never be a teacher. What is this game? It's... All right. What's up? I'm doing good. Uh, short answer, yes. Long answer, simple. Short answer, doing interview, perhaps new discovery type and body call vibration. Body might be able to play with time travel to make it possible. <laughs> what? I also already have all of the achievements for this, so like, I feel like I feel like this uh, is one of them. Yeah, sounds like it. <clears throat> what are all the? Question mark ones. I don't know. The achievements that I actually haven't gotten yet. I guess. Um, okay, so um now what do we do? Because in this game we don't actually have to go in order. I've because I've already got everything unlocked, apparently, bugs and shit. So like we could we could just do John again until we find the actual good ending. Or we could <laughs> leave him behind in his hellscape <laughs> and and go to something beyond the sky. I mean, I feel like you should probably, like, fix the child, but, I mean, what would I know? Chat, Jesus. are you satisfied with that ending? <laughs> should, should we talk to Rose? Or f make actual friends? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Feels right. Feels right. I feel satisfied. <laughs> Holy shit. 
<laughs> we're just gonna fuck up all these teams worse than they were. He deserves it. Fucked up by Homestuck. Something beyond the sky because it is unintentionally Xenoblade reference. All right, I guess everybody's happy with leaving John at a vague existential crisis, which you know is pretty fair for him. Let's move on to Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Oh All right, God. MTT, are you ready to voice the driest <laughs> no. oh, right. character? If I if I'm gonna get you involved, you have to you have to be the friend. I do, I do. But also you're probably gonna wanna give me like a live feed of it so I'm not like five seconds behind okay. watching your stream on Twitch. Yeah. Uh stream so we'll do uh low resolution, low frame rate. Nice. Nice. Better text re re text yeah, custom at the lowest and the lowest. Bam, go live Yippee! in the general. <clears throat> Is this okay? <laughs> yeah, fucking Senna's yippies. Uh, <laughs> hold on, let me. Yippee and yep. Nah. Up. Get that. <laughs> All right, Japanese. There we go. It works. Okay. On the advice of your new friend John. <laughs> You go to visit one of his close comrades. Close only figuratively speaking, since it seems she lives all the way on the other side of the country. That's no problem for you, though, since your new powers let you hop anywhere, anytime, even to places that don't exist. Well, you think your powers let you do that. You just have this distinct metatextual feeling that you could pretty much go anywhere at this point. You know that doesn't make any sense? There's nothing that doesn't make sense about friendship, though, and that's exactly what you're about to do. Friendship, that is. You're about to... Do some friendship by making a new friend. MTT's mic is buzzing, you're aware or no? I can't fix it. MTT, your mic is buzzing. Is it still buzzing? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let me try... Oh. Is that better? Nope. Cool. Uh, <laughs> oh, I do hear it. Weird. Can it be fixed, or is it just a cables thing? I guess it's just a cables thing. All right. Didn't Maybe you that. need a new mic. Maybe. Probably. Are I've any used of your audio cables... Mic for like 15 years. Any of your audio cables Time touching other physical. cables? Uh... <laughs> probably. That, that would, would probably it. be it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you separate the cables? <laughs> From how? Where the fuck is it? Where is my cable? Because it's a USB mm -hmm. mic, to be fair. So is mine. Oh, shit. Thanks. That's it. <clears throat> Excuse me. That any better? Nope. Then I have no freaking idea what the hell to do. Okay. Just have to live with it. Yeah. Might have to do some. Uh, you can you can troubleshoot yourself later on, like a stream or something. Like record your own audio. And yeah. Oh. We'll definitely do that. <clears throat> Let's continue with making a new friend. Her name is. You check your notes. Uh, Rose. This is her house. Apparently, looks kind of weird and modern, and is situated in the middle of the woods for no good reason that you can think of. <laughs> Also, it's pouring rain, which is not what you would want to what you would describe as ideal friend making conditions. Still, nothing stops a mailman, not from delivering mail, nor making friends. Rather famously, rain and other similar weather patterns provide no deterrent to the performance of his duty. And there is no duty more important than friendship. <laughs> oh, she pretty. <laughs> Suddenly a woodland. Yeah, it's Rose. <laughs> it's, all right, fair. Who goes there? Oh, it's your new friend, Rose. Obviously, there is literally no one else this could be. It could be her mom. Oh, wait, no, she has eyes. Never mind. Also, the hair's different. Yeah. <laughs> you introduce yourself. You are the cool mailman who told, who John told to exp- You are the- <laughs> Wow, you're fucking this up already. You are the cool <laughs> mailman who John told her to expect a visit from soon. You would doff <laughs> your mail hat to signal a friendly greeting, except recently you accidentally dropped it in a sewer, along with all your other mail-specific clothes, as well as all the mail you were supposed to deliver, as you explained to her gratuitously in an unconvincing <laughs> manner. Jeez. <laughs> Hi, I'm your new friend. I dropped everything in the sewer. <laughs> it's, not, play, hello. it's not a great start, but you've done much worse. 
unfortunately true. <laughs> you are not. You are not a mailman. Fuck. You are busted almost immediately. You briefly consider whether you should double down on the lie and try to say something mailman-like, or whether the right call is to come clean, since she's clearly too smart for this amateur bullshit. Oh, I missed you, Rose. One of my best friends, who remains one of my best friends back home, I swear to God, she is, like... I've known her for, like, ten years at this point, and I'm the first time I met her was in a Rose cosplay, and she just was this person. <laughs> The next time I saw her was in a Kanaya cosplay, and she was also that person. <laughs> very that sharp and of... very capable of being incredibly catty. That says a lot about both your friend and those two characters. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. But it's taking a few seconds too long for you to decide, which looks guilty as hell. That's it. The jig is up. You slouch in defeat. You ask her if she would please consider not telling John. Your heart couldn't take it if you found out your entire friendship was based on a lie. What friendship? <laughs> you want me to keep a secret from one of my best friends to protect the feelings of a random buffoon who I've never met and arbitrarily showed up to my house in the remote wilderness like a creep? Hey, you're the one whose name is Tentacle Therapist, alright? I'm just... Glass houses, alright? <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> Wait, no or yes. I guess we need to start making saves, eh? Uh-huh, maybe. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, I want you to keep a secret. Um, yes, that's what you want. It's an interesting proposition, if for no other reason than its audacity. I admire your resolve in the face of humiliation. This doesn't mean we're friends, though. Oof. But she is smiling. Rough. Well, that's fine. You're hopeful. Your mind is fuzzy, but you think you remember this. You're good at this. You're excellent at making people like you through underhanded means. You can't wait to take advantage of this 13-year-old girl's goodwill. I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> oh, fucking... Why did you... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you read this, if you read any of these things, you gotta be you gotta be ready for some very questionable phrasing. Jesus. <laughs> they do not shy away from basically anything. I know, but like fucking hell. <laughs> that's it. That's a hell of a sentence. Yeah, but you know that they workshopped it like four times to make it as cringe as oh. possible. <laughs> No, I'm I'm fully aware. I'm like I'm I'm not saying it like they didn't realize what they were doing. They knew damn well what they were doing, but oof. Holy shit. Re just remember oh just God. remember Long. Remember Long. And there was a fucking where where was that where was that screenshot? I think it's still on my desktop somewhere. I've saved it because it was precious. Was it the was it one of the ones with him in a flower crown? I forget. Not one of the ones no. with him in a flower crown, no, it was the one about uh about white. I don't remember exactly, but I think I know, like, what the scene was, That's now that you mention it. These are all Persona. Hold up. Where did the picture go? I know I've seen it, which is why it's driving me nuts that I can't find it right now. <clears throat> it's just in the YouTube folder. That's a Felix. Why do I have just a picture of Felix in there? The cat? No, um, Fire Emblem <laughs> Felix. It might... I'm not gonna say it's gone, but it definitely is not easily findable in this moment. And I don't no. remember exactly how they phrased it, but I do know it was something to the effect of, um, like... I can be whatever it is that you want me to be. In fact, I am any color. My color is literally F F F F F, like perfect white, which is means that it's it's less it, it, it's racially Im impossible to be anything. <laughs> right. It was something about yeah. how it's how it's less offensive than actually saying what race you are. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, that does make that does remind me now. Yeah, that line it does sound familiar. 
That was a good line. Um, okay. You... Oh, okay, wow. Not like that. Let's not be fucking weird. In fact, let's be the le let's be let that be the last creepy thought you have for comical purposes. S grade jokes only. Let's all get our brains out of the gutter. <laughs> Rose raises a thin brow. There's something unsettling about her deep violet eyes. You're pretty sure most humans don't have eyes like that. But what the fuck do you know? You're a stranger around these parts. Wait, aren't you a human too? Whatever, it's not a big deal. Not when there are friends to be made or something. Do you want to come inside? Unless I'm interrupting your internal monologue, of course. Far be it from me to ever cut short any sort of navel-gazing sidebar. It's just ever so slightly wet out here. You would absolutely love that. If it's not too much trouble, of course, you wouldn't want to put Rose out. You're lying, though. You're 100% fine with being absolutely infuriatingly obnoxious if it means making a friend. Rose purses <laughs> her lips, considering. <clears throat> Their predilections towards male men mimicry were all that John told me about. Oh? He also told me that you had certain powers. Powers of teleportation and time travel. I told him that he must be mistaken, since it's a well-known and accepted fact that magic, although a popular and highly engaging subject of fiction, is fake as hell. Oh, your zappy powers? No, 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 no. No, those are totally Touch. real and not fake. Real in a different way than you being a mailman is real, since that was actually made up. <laughs> is it also real as... Oh, there you go. <laughs> Camera sticks. <laughs> is that so? Prove it. You shrug. Easy enough. You hold out a hand, and after a moment of hesitation, Rose puts her fingers in yours. Her nails are long and sharp and painted a glossy black. She closes her eyes and her umbrella droops. Should I picture my room or something similar? I'm not quite sure how this is supposed to work. She still thinks you're fucking with her. You tell her that you guess she can do that if she wants. <laughs> you, you zap the two of you inside the big modern house, and when you open your eyes, you find yourself in a large, messy bedroom. Oh. She drops her umbrella. You... You really did that. Rose stands in the center of a room in full rain gear. Her boots track muddy prints into the thick white carpet. Surprise, you really are magic. Rose puts a small hand against her perfectly painted black lips. She seems momentarily lost for words, and you get the feeling that... This... You get the feeling that is not a thing that happens very often. Her eyes are wide and deeply purple. They're sparkling, you might even say. Continue looking into the 13-year-old girl's purple eyes. <laughs> Ho hold on, I'll be right back. Stay here, don't go out into the hall. It's not... it's not safe. You tell Rose to take your time. You're happy to just stand here, dripping on her nice, clean floor. <laughs> she leaves the room, and you take the opportunity to examine your surroundings a little more closely. The bed is unmade, books are strewn over the floor carelessly, and a collection of half-drunk cups of coffee crowd the desk. Half-finished knitting projects lie in soft piles all over the room. In fact, there's a lot of evidence that this room is often occupied by someone with a lot of interest who has trouble settling down and putting her attention to one thing at a time. Mm. Man, you were late. Not with interests, but with friends. You can't imagine settling for just one. Rose has a number of posters on her walls, although nowhere near as many as your friend John. A calendar hangs beside the window, days ticked off with little X's all the way up to 413, which is circled. You step closer to read the year date up in the corner. 2009. What the hell do you care about the date? You can make friends any damn day of the week, rain or shine, night or day. Rose sure is taking a while out there. She told you that it wasn't safe out in the hall. Maybe she hadn't been quipping. Maybe she's actually in trouble. What should you do? Um... <laughs> God, this dialogue. Yeah, 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 for... Yeah, it's it's very much a visual novel, but it's one of the... fuck wobbiest novels you're ever gonna read. <laughs> visual novel. <laughs> visual is in tiny quotes. 2000 hours, you're friendless, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I look for her or do I stay put? I don't know. Do you think that she's in trouble? I mean, the, I mean, the only real danger is her mom, which... I don't know. Do you want to see your mom? Don't go creeping around at a kid's house. Stay put. <laughs> stay put it is. <sighs> your patience pays off almost at once. Rose is back and looking significantly more put together. Also, she's brought you a towel. And her, and her signature shirt. Here. 
I'm not overly attached to anything in here. It's mostly just childish nonsense I haven't yet bothered to rid myself of, but I'd appreciate it if you tried not to drip on any of the notebooks. She has changed out of her raincoat and boots, and she's dressed in a neat black skirt and a white shirt with a purple blob thing with tentacles. What is it with kids in their blob shirts? <clears throat> now that's dealt with. Please sit down. She crosses her legs. You suddenly feel like you're at a job interview. Friend interview. You wish you were a little less damp. <laughs> Don't we all? I'm assuming ergotic literature, as in you have to engage with it in a meaningful way aside from just flipping the pages. Damn, Homestuck got me interested. See, like, actually, the opposite. But also not. It's like, if you want to get anything out of Homestuck, you have to read it, but don't try too hard. Because I've seen more people fail from, like, having their walls of red string become incomprehensible. And I tell them, just don't. Just fucking, just don't. Just go for the ride. <laughs> the story will bring back that loose thread 4,000 pages from now after you've long forgotten about it. Don't try. <laughs> yeah, just understand that the story was sort of written as it went. There was <laughs> yeah. no, there was a lot of the, a lot of plot threads weren't like planned in a, ahead of time or anything. So <laughs> just bear that in mind. So don't be like, but wait, what about this? <clears throat> Most likely they had forgotten about it by that point or <laughs> will remember later. Also, they're probably just too focused uh, drawing <laughs> themselves kissing fucking Dante Bosco. Or or leprechauns. Or wasting all of their own <laughs> of the Kickstarter money on a wedding ring. <sighs> There's so much to Homestuck <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Actually... Let's switch places. You're still pretty wet, and you don't want to get her bedspread messed up. Don't worry about it. That's what washing machines are for. Now, let's talk about magic. Which, up until now, I have always taken for granted as being something <coughs> confined to storybooks. Rose takes a wistful look to her bedroom window, grayed out and blurry with raindrops. You get the feeling that she's doing it for effect. Maybe that's why she wanted you to switch places with her. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely why she wanted to switch places. And then comes you, the not a mailman with a penchant for showing up and attempting to make friends with unwitting children. Well, fair. She's got you there. But honestly, she might be a child, but she doesn't really seem to be unwitting. On the contrary, she's really quite witting. Witty. Wit win win. Whittling? I'm glad you noticed. She folds her hands and clears her throat. You think that if she had any notes, she would be shuffling them. And so, with the question, and so the question remains: Are you a good witch or a bad witch, or are you a wizard? We've already established that you are not a public servant. Is there any difference between a witch and a wizard? Of course there is, but exactly how specific of a difference can vary. According to some works of fiction, a wizard is just a witch's male counterpart. But in certain mythologies, for instance, Arthurian legend, the difference appears to be class-based. Wizards reside at court and are classically trained, while witches are self-taught and run wild through the forest. I won't deny that those differences tend to often be gendered as well. You ask her which one she is, a witch or a wizard. Me? She shifts, uncrossing and recrossing her legs. You shrug and say she just seems to know a lot about him. I know a thing or two, but can I tell you a secret? Oh my god, Rose, you, she has no idea how much you would love to learn her secret. Please, yes, yes, tell me, tell me, spill. <laughs> I find them wizards, I mean, utterly <clears throat> reprehensible. They disgust me. Everything from their foppish robes to their grizzled beards. It's my mother who is the wizard enthusiast in this house. Although... She glances from side to side, theatrically. Most of the things Rose does seems to be at least a little bit theatrical. She kneels on the carpet besides a clutter of books. I don't show these to many people, actually. I haven't shown them to anybody. Not even John. John seemed to be a pretty cool guy. Definitely a guy worth sharing a few secret notebooks with, you know, when he's back from his existential crisis walk. Who am I? <laughs> no, I haven't shown them to John, and I've only shown Strider to punish him. <laughs> we are doing Strider today. <laughs> Hell yeah, we are. You nod, pretending you don't know who this Strider person is. You are a totally normal dude with an absolutely ungodly number of friends. A shadow moves through the center of you, a trembling moment of deja vu. You, you do have a lot of friends, don't you? It feels true, but the only people you know here are John and now Rose. Weird. 
You try to put this from your you you try to put it to from your mind and listen to Rose again. <laughs> She's still talking about this mysterious rider flipping through one of the journals. Too quickly for you to see anything specific, only that it is full from cover to cover. As if my modest writings are the sole source of homoerotic tension in his, in his life when <laughs> his brother is the one who insists on filling their poem with assorted dick butt for ironic purposes. <laughs> That's just like the middle of us of a sentence, right? <laughs> yeah. That... <laughs> man, uh, I... ironic dick butt, man. I miss this series. <laughs> <laughs> rolls rolls her eyes. Oh boy, you missed the beginning of that. It probably made way more sense than it seemed like. Rose is searching through her notebooks, checking markings on the spine that seem to be a sort of cataloging system of arcane symbols. How do I? Is it just a exclamation point? Add quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where is? Oh, right. She does something quick and complex with her fingers, and adds an, and another notebook pops into existence and falls into her lap. <gasps> she really is a wizard. What? It's just a Silidex. A child could use one. Here. Hi, Zach! Oh, boy. Do you know the source material? <laughs> Zach might be a new victim. Oh, lord. This notebook has a couple drawings in it, but most of it is filled with small, neat handwriting and lavender ink. Is Rose writing a book? No, don't be silly. I'm writing four books, at least. Five, depending on whether I decide to flesh out Callum's black backstory. It isn't strictly necessary, but it does add a certain amount of valuable character insight, which renders their actions in later volumes more sympathetic. Now that I <clears throat> now that I need all of my anti-heroes to be sympathetic, I'm just thinking of what the literary reviewers would say. Smart! You never would have thought about the literary reviewers would say. She is honestly pretty impressive for someone her age. Age has nothing to do with it. But don't get carried away, it's only a rough draft. You ask her if you could take a look. She hesitates, but you doubt she would have shown it to you if she didn't want you to look. What the hell? If you can't trust a stranger's spherical... If you can't trust a, str a strange spherical imprint you meet outside in the rain, who can you trust? <laughs> right? Your thoughts exactly! Rose hands you the notebook and you open it at random, letting fate guide your hands. <laughs> Friglish bothered his beard as if unkinking a hitch in a long silk windsock. A more pedestrian audience would parse the exhibit as nervous compulsion, behavior to petition contempt among the reasonable. He was, however, not surrounded by the reasonable, but the wise, a distinction in men that would forever be the difference in history's garland of treasured follies. As a matter of fact, his cadre of fellow wizards were all putting similar moves on their beards as well. The practice would evince thoughtfulness, sagacity even, if they didn't do it all the time. Standing in line at the bank, shooting squirrels from bird feeders, few occasions were safe. This is the actual experience of reading Homestuck. Every nice. single page you open is this much text, and you scroll to see how much, how long you're going to be on this fucking page. Zazerpan inspected the clue, <laughs> a single piece of evidence cradled in his court. Coriaceous old man palms. It was a human bone, not striking in the tail it told alone, so much as they told by the thousand, like it festooning the marshy soil of the mass grave. The grisly expanse bore the texture of a decadent <laughs> desert, like one of Smarney's formidable custard trifles wobbled out on wheels for the holidays to the dismay of a small nation. You're certain of this? asked Friglish. Despite what he was doing with his beard, he was, in fact, immersed in meaningful contemplation. I'm afraid I am becoming more so with each terrible tick browsed by that gaudy timepiece slung around your neck. In case it wasn't clear, Friglish wore a clock Zazerpan didn't care for. It was magic. The massacre of Sirs Gnelf was not a- Yeah, this is pretty dense. Yeah, wow, you definitely took all of that in. But smart, you stroke your own imaginary beard and pretend to ponder the deeper meaning. Yes, intriguing. Zazerpan and Friglish. Clearly there's some history there. <laughs> yes, clearly, but what the two of them shared went beyond simple romance. That's why it has gone so spectacularly sour. Rose becomes increasingly more animated as she tells you about her gay wizard OCs. 
<laughs> like she's far more interested in them than she is herself. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> they share an intellectual bond, a mutual dedication to knowledge and the preservation of such. The goal of the learned is to amass their wisdom and keep it from general dissemination into the main populace of wizards. They feed it to their apprentices in drips and drafts. Of course, this will eventually lead to ruin. Of course. You flip further in the book, searching for the part where it leads to ruin. Ruin sounds interesting. <laughs> Zazerpan knew he would see his wayward apprentice again. Knew it like he knew the tide would turn and the sun would blaze to his zenith Skim. as each inexorable. <laughs> his apprentice's eyes were hidden behind dark glasses, but Zazerpan knew that if he could see them, they would be. Clownness wasn't here for justice out or for revenge. They were here exclusively because Zazerpan had something they wanted, something they were owed. You flip through the notebook, checking out the drawings. There's a lot of wizards, each more bearded and venerable than the last. <laughs> One of the pictures, the most recent maybe, since it's on the very last page of the journal, is of two young wizards. Twins, maybe. They have gray hair and are wearing slick green suits and are standing back to back with their arms entwined, staring into the middle distance. That sounds important. It is very anime. You compliment Rose on her artistic prowess. <laughs> yes, thank you. They're all right. I'm a much better writer than I am an artist. You tell her you think she's pretty good, way better than you. You're absolutely positive she's going to be famous one day. I appreciate the encouragement, even though I know you're just trying to flatter me due to your strange thirst for affirmative experiences. John told me all about that. Did he now? <laughs> Man, can you tell me about it? Because I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> Damn, busted. <laughs> but you really do think she's talented. Gay wizards, Rose is my kind of person. Later, later fur. Later fur. It's fine. It's not as if my social calendar is over full <laughs> out here in the middle of the woods. Don't tell anyone I said that. I don't have many friends. And don't tell them I've been drawing. He'd be insufferable. He? He? N never mind. He? You assure Rose that her secrets are safe and hand back her journal. You are really excited about your new friend, if you might be so bold, and her wizard stories. Although, <gasps> wait, hadn't she said that she hated wizards? What's your point? You're no expert on wizards or on Rose, but it seems like she actually does seem to like them because she has several <laughs> notebooks full of wizard fiction. You aren't trying to get, like, real here, but maybe it's possible her mom isn't the only one in the family who likes wizards? Rose pulls her book out of your hands. That and the rest of the books vanish into thin air. Oh, right. That must have been that, what she called it, Silidex? She doesn't look angry exactly, but the lines around her mouth and eyes that softened as she talked about her book have hardened back up. Her eyes glitter menacingly. Oh, is that right, Freud? Well, why don't you diagnose me? Hey, wow. You weren't trying to be condescending or whatever. Clearly. Were you aware that it is a common psychological phenomenon for an individual to react to trauma by creating fictional representations of that which has caused them bodily harm or emotional dismay? Have you been traumatized by wizards? To suggest that the portrayal of these ficti fictional renderings somehow condones them or supports them is absolutely absurd. So what she's saying is she draws wizards to cope. Rose rises regally to her feet. The lightning turns her into an ethereal silhouette. Oh, oh boy. Jesus. This seems familiar. What I'm saying is that I don't need to justify my fictional predilections to you or to anyone else. No, no, no. She's totally right. You're sorry that you suggested she might like wizards. That was completely out of line. It was horribly presumptuous and not at all the way that a friend should ever act. You are right. You are so sorry. You will promise it will never, ever happen again. <laughs> no, I don't suppose it will. It I think you failed. Did, did the lights just go? Did the <laughs> lights just go out? Oh, there we go. It's probably just because Rose's hair is such a pale blonde, but it almost looks like she's glowing in the dim bedroom. Like light behaves a little differently around her than it does on everything else. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, right. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> took me a minute to remember what. Why? Uh, <laughs> would you look at that? It appears the rain has lightened up a bit. Oh yeah, with a disgusted face like that. Yeah, this this is a fuck up. The rain is hitting the window so loudly, you're actually having trouble hearing her. <laughs> and your point is? You could just zap yourself out to where the weather is drier. <laughs> Fuck off. That went down Oof. so fast. Go zap yourself. <laughs> oof. Oof. 
It was going so well, too. Oh, boy. No, I, I just, one of these has happened to me recently. Something that's so positive and one thing happens and like, nope, everything just right out the window. It's kind of funny how fast it can fuck up. Ooh, I'm sorry. Whew. All right. Well, um, whoever said um, that we should stay put, uh, yeah, you fucked up. <laughs> What we should do. That was clearly, you. Clearly, no, that was not me. That was other people that said uh -huh. we should stay put and listen to what she said. And then she showed us that inner part and everything that she got so excited about. And then, you know, like a real uh, curious person, we asked one question and then she zapped us back out of the house. Yep, yep. She really. This just is why you never talk type. about gay wizards. <laughs> she really just she became <laughs> my type instantly. Yeah, that. This. Yes. Yes. We yes. got him. Got another one. Go look for her. <laughs> You were too anxious to sit still, and you aren't the sort of person who just sits there and waits for friend opportunities to fall into their lap. Yeah, let, let's go ruin the carpet and the rest of her house. Better to run headlong into danger, or as much danger as a minimalist upper middle class house in the middle of the woods can offer. Rose had told you that it isn't safe. You creep out into the hallway, where a bunch of things happen more or less simultaneously. A deluge of quick time events that you had no idea were coming. Lightning flashes <laughs> in a perfect jagged line across the tall window at the end of the hall, followed immediately by a crash of thunder so loud you think the house might be falling down. Abruptly, all the lights go out. Another flash of oh, lightning, God. and for a vertiginous moment, you see a long, thin figure superimposed against the window. You freak the fuck out, jumping about a foot in the air and yowling like a cat. A small hand leads on your shoulder, and you jump again. Calm down. It's just me. Rose speaks in a normal tone of voice and it's jarring. The house is echoey and cavernous, and there's just something about a dark house in a stormy evening that makes you want to whisper. I told you to stay put for a reason. It's too early for my mother to be sauced enough not to notice random strangers in her house, and I don't want to go through the tedious process of explaining who you are. Ah, yes. She is the danger. You have a perfectly reasonable understanding. Yeah. A uh, perfectly understandable reason for why you left, and that reason is that you were lonely for ten seconds. <laughs> Rose snorts. <laughs> cold. You mean you're cold. <laughs> well, you are soaking wet. Follow me. She grabs you by the wrist and tows you down the hall. You wonder if you should warn her about the strange wraith-like creature you saw by the window, but you don't want to <laughs> freak her out. <laughs> Although her mom might be at risk, too. Whatever. Uh -huh. Moms are tough. She'll be fine. This probably isn't the first time she's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with a weird slender man. The house looks haunted as shit. <laughs> Rose brings you to a dark laundry room, then motions you to take off your hoodie, which you do gladly because it is soaking wet. That's interesting. Hmm? The design on the front, does it mean anything? Oh yeah, it is kind of cool. A blue line that zigzags on one end like lightning. Looking at it makes you feel unsettled. You realize Rose is still waiting for a response, so you just hand her the hoodie and tell her no. You're pretty sure it's just an abstract sign. Then you stand there for a while while she tosses the sweatshirt in the dryer, feeling the alarming currents of memory in your bloodstream. You're sure there must be something you forgot to do. You continue to feel weird as Rose hits the dryer button and nothing happens. Fuck. She hits the button a few more times, as if that will make the difference when the power is out. <laughs> she presses her thumb and <laughs> forefinger to the bridge of her nose. Well... You aren't going to fit into anything of mine. She leads you down more along dark hallways. Man, this house is unreasonably huge. You ask Rose if a lot of people live here. No, it's just me, my mother, and a horde of liquids not soluble in water. That means alcohol. Here, try not to drip on the carpet. Wait, are you just walking around? Just never mind. Bear ass naked, yeah. Your... <laughs> I guess so. As, as naked as a, as a, a whatever. You aren't sure how you're supposed to manage that, but okay. Now with that attitude. The room is large and dark, and when Rose parts the curtains, a flash of lightning illuminates a four-poster bed, a long counter, and a sh shelf covered head to foot in bottles. Jesus Rose Christ. Vanishes through another door, leaving you to peruse. This is, yeah, this is all liquor. Shit, this is a lot of booze. Here, I'm not sure what you would want to wear, but this should work until the power comes back on and we can dry your clothes. This seems like canon. We're changing our clothes again. Rose oh, hands yeah. a long silk robe. She won't miss this. I don't think she's ever even worn it. She has this whole closet full of fantastic clothes that she never puts on. You take the robe and go into the large master bedroom. Bathroom. It's kind of a mess. The tub looks like it hasn't been cleaned in a long time. The robe gives you the same nodded feeling of familiarity that your hooded hoodie did, but you put it on anyway. It's a relief to get out of your wet clothes. You hang them carefully on the shower rod. 
When you head back into the bedroom, you find Rose standing in front of the wall of liquor. She's holding a bottle of Grey Goose and squinting at the label like she's trying to read the nutrition facts. <laughs> I've often... I've often wondered what exactly the merits of consuming this are. It tastes quite literally like burning. She opens a bottle. Can before you, you can protest that she is in by no means the legal drinking agent, whatever the fuck you are, she puts the bottle to her mouth and takes a sip. She splutters. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, taking it straight is not not generally the advised way to drink. Also, I love this. Like, like this is this tastes terrible. <laughs> Let's try Turns it. out the pain, like, cauterizing your mind. Oh, God. You could have told her that. Straight vodka isn't for the uninitiated, even fancy vodka. You take the bottle from her. She hesitates for a moment, then lets it go. You set it back on the shelf. This really is a quite an impressive liquor cabinet, liquor wall, liquor room. Her mom must have a really refined palate. Don't strain yourself. You can say it. What's the point of mincing words? She's a fucking alcoholic. This is intense. You are not sure if you are prepared for something this heavy. You were kind of counting on some silly shenanigans. Maybe a couple funny jokes. You aren't cut out for this. This, too, is Homestuck in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> Comes in with the heavy shit right hook out of nowhere with surprising regularity and yet still rare enough that you are never on guard. It's like, yeah, it's like they give the mom just like a hilarious fucking like personal bar in her fucking bedroom and it's like wow that's silly and the character's like yeah she's a fucking alcoholic it's like well yeah but you didn't have to say it <laughs> you get the feeling that at some point you might have been cut out for this you might have been the sort of person your friends or potential friends could count on in fact you know on some level that this is true but whenever you try to nail down any sort of specifics you find a gaping lacuna in your experiences it's all just white noise rose's shoulders slump as she stands surveying her mother's bottles she doesn't even have the decency to hide her distasteful habits. Who needs an entire wall of liquor bottles? She doesn't have people over. She doesn't have any friends. This is all just for me. Just more of a passive-aggressive act as a femme fatale 1950s housewife with a death wish. It's just like the wizards. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Back that up. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about it. You know how long it's been since I've had a home-cooked meal? I'm not saying that I require or even deserve a lovingly crafted culinary masterpiece every time I sit down to eat. That's going a bit far. I know John complains about being plagued by fatherly concern every chance he gets. He is overwhelmed by pastries whenever he ventures from his room. I'm glad my mother doesn't poke her considerable nose into my private affairs. But I'm... I'm sick of eating oatmeal. Ro Ro Rose 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 <laughs> This is too heavy. This is too heavy for a sec. Back it up. I told I told you, don't worry about it. But you will worry about it. You worry about all your friends. All two of them. Rose smiles with half her mouth. It seems about be about all she can manage. Lightning crashes. She looks so small and sad against the wall of bottles. You know how to fix this. How to make friends trauma dump. No. <laughs> that doesn't work. It works in fiction, maybe sometimes, but remember, the first time when it was actually friend stuff, that fucked up. So yes, according to Homestuck, trauma dump. <laughs> Thunder rolls, and you clench your fist. A friendship clench. You don't know who you are, you don't know why you're here, but you do know that you surely have these powers for a reason. And what better reason than helping a poor young girl with her troubled home life? <laughs> Rolling up your sloppy robe sleeves, <laughs> you get to work. Oh god, what are you doing? You start with the dark liquors first. In your experience, these cause the worst hangovers and are more likely to contribute to the absence of hot motherly meals and the overconsumption of oatmeal. You grab two bottles hey. of rum and one of bourbon, which you tuck in one armpit. And then you zap out of the house and into a clearing in the nearby woods a couple of hours ago before it started raining. You drop the bottles and go back for more. Are you just stealing all of my mother's liquor? Is this your solution to her alcoholism? Don't worry, Rose can thank you later. <laughs> that's one way. To, that's one way to solve it, I guess. Her fucking face. <laughs> you go for the tequila, then the vodka, then you get sick of this organized approach and just start grabbing whatever the fuck and dumping it in the past. Rose watches you do this for a while, then she hops up on the counter, crosses her legs, and starts texting. 
She is really so intent on her conversation that she isn't even noticing you fixing her domestic situation. She keeps giving you the... Is that a fucking, like, Motorola Razor? Of course it is. It's set in 2009. Shit, you're right. She keeps giving you little fleeting looks, and you're pretty sure she must be talking about you. (laughs) You should just let her talk. It isn't right to try to invade your friend's privacy. You attempt to resist the temptation, which you fail at immediately. Not even an overused meme can save you. You zap behind her onto the counter where you can spy on her private correspondence. Cool. <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about them. I'm sorry. <sighs> and here, are, and here was me trying to take advantage of your uncanny ability to make guesses verging on prognostication. I'm recently considering a re- reevaluation on magic. So, did was this also the fuck up? <laughs> I thought it was going well. Maybe. You don't know who this person is. Maybe you should just. You go back in time a couple minutes ago to when Rose started a conversation. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> your past self is busily zapping back and forth, carrying liquor bottles. You hunker down so you don't see yourself and cause a paradox or whatever the fuck. This nice. is so stupid. <laughs> Tentacle therapy. <laughs> <laughs> nice paradoxes. Out of a morbid curiosity to shine a light on my future, I come with metaphorical hat in hand to ask you to consult your dream clouds. Do you happen to know anything about a strange cardboard cutout creature? <laughs> I'm gonna just is just okay. Do you know anything about a strange cardboard cutout creature masquerading as a mailman? Are, are you sleeping? Oh, sorry, I had to scold Beck because he's been acting really weird all of a sudden. Anyways, is this the same mailman that John was talking about? The fake one who hung out with him? That's the one. They are currently emptying my mother's liquor cabinet in an attempt to prevent her from overindulging herself. Are they drinking it? No, I think they're just dropping it into the woods with their magic powers. Oh, mm, do they know that she could just go out and buy more liquor? That's something you can do where you live, right? Yes, well, <laughs> not exactly where we live. I think the nearest boozer is a good 20 minutes drive. I'm not actually entirely sure where my mother got it all. We don't own a car, as far as I know. Sometimes it seems like she has the ability to just make things appear. I don't know anything about them, I'm sorry. And here was me trying to take advantage of your uncanny ability to make guesses verging on prognostication, as I am recently considering a reevaluation on magic. I'm still pretty sure magic is fake. At least the kinds of magic you're talking about. That's probably some. There's probably some real magic out there somewhere. Yes, for instance, the sort that lets you spy on your hostess's private correspondence while you are stealing her mother's lib- libations. You freeze. With a contrite zap, you reappear in front of Rose. She sets her phone down and props her chin up on a delicate fist. Sorry, you honestly don't know what got into you. You just couldn't resist using your powers for evil. Haven't you heard that with great power comes great responsibility? Rose is right. She's totally right. You've only had this power for like a day, so you still aren't used to the idea of being able to just zap all over the narrative. Clearly, you did not appreciate the implications. And zapping all over the narrative sounds potentially stressful. Oh, yeah, you are incredibly stressed up right now. Rose laughs. Here, have some tequila. <laughs> you apologize for stealing all of her mom's drinks. That was kind of overzealous of you. No, actually, I thought it was hilarious. Oh, yeah, you sure looked like you were laughing up a fit there. <laughs> That's what she looks like when she finds something <laughs> hilarious. I've never really been one for pranks. That's always fallen more into John's wheelhouse, but... There's nothing wrong in occasionally stepping outside of one's comfort zone. Let's do the vodka next. Whoever made that quote Did is you already do the... themselves. Which, which quote? What? Which quote? <laughs> Zap all over the narrative? Which <laughs> There's a lot of quotes. There's a lot of quotes. <clears throat> With great power, oh, with great, great power responsibility. Comes... Whoever made that quote? Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah, uh, yeah. What was it? Like Uncle Ben or something? He does sound a bit full of himself. He should take. He should take a shot to calm down. The two of you working together gets the place cleared up pretty quick. You zap Rose along with you to the bright clearing in the field, and for a moment she stands in a sunbeam, blinking up at the cloudless sky. Her expression says she might still will not be totally convinced any of this is happening. When all the liquor has been transferred from the bedroom to the woods and a big glittering dragon's horde of booze, you and Rose fall down next to it in a messy heap. Well, you fall in a messy heap. Rose lowers herself daintily, sitting more on her knees than her butt, probably just to keep her skirt from getting dirty. 
You get the idea that even though she lives in the middle of nowhere, she doesn't spend a ton of time outside. You tell her again that you're sorry you spied on her correspondence with her green friend, Gigi. Also, you hope she isn't going to get in trouble with her mom. I'm not unduly concerned. I'll tell her where it all is in a couple of days. Although by that time, I'm sure at least a good third of it will be water damaged. It's glass bottles. How can it get water damaged? Mm -hmm. I'm sure this will have fantastic implications for our relationship and not at all exacerbate the emotional problems underlying her addiction. You laugh awkwardly. Well, now you just kind of feel like an asshole. <laughs> Rose flies back in the grass and raises a hand to trace the curves of a fluffy white cloud. She closes her eyes. Perhaps it's just projection on my part, or wishful thinking. But ever since I met you, I feel like something has changed. Oh man, it's been a wonderful 20 minutes. Or rather, something has failed to change, if that makes any sense. It's probably nothing. This whole fucking plot is gonna be just preventing anybody from making the story happen, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's exactly what you've done. <laughs> Fuck. Her eyes flicker back open, endlessly purple, fixated on the sky like she can see something behind it. And once again, you feel like there's something really crucial that you forgot. But at least you've made a new friend. And even if you don't think Rose's brand would ever allow her to call you as such, you're lying in a sunny clearing next to a pile of alcohol, and honestly, it doesn't get much friendlier than that. <laughs> sure. Victory! <laughs> Yay! There's the happy sounds. Okay, cool. We one-shotted that one. Huzzah. No, we didn't. Absolutely failed. No, we didn't. <laughs> failed once. But then time powers. Are you ready for what is going to be the best out of this whole fucking thing? Uh, yeah, but you're probably going to do... You're going to do day first, but yeah. All right, so uh, I'm just going to let y'all sit and stew on what a king's feast of ass might mean. <laughs> <laughs> Send you to intermission, and I'm going to the bathroom. Back in a minute. <laughs> God, of course that's what it's called. God damn it. Yippee! God damn it, why the fuck is he like this? Also, those are some awesome games. Holy shit. That doesn't sound good. It's fine. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. How's everybody doing? It's a meal fit for a king, served on a donkey's back. Sure, that's exactly what that is. You're right. You got it. Got it in one. get sunglasses I want to do this right your laugh is incredible <laughs> is it is it I mean I hope so I don't know I think my laugh I feel like my laugh can be obnoxious sometimes but I but then people say that they like my laugh and I'm like oh okay <laughs> I'm glad people enjoy that It makes me feel happy slash warm. Aww. Uh. 
I return. Welcome back, friend. How was the bathroom? Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> reinvigorating. Good, good, to know, good to hear. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> I did. I sure did, didn't I? <clears throat> oh boy. Let us go. I see. I'm. I'm actually like really, really upset that um you're gonna be the guy voicing him because Dave is just the fucking best. <laughs> Dave I mean, is, it's... Dave is the guy that I cosplayed. It's your stream. You can voice him if you want. Uh, I don't have to take every character. Uh... I could be the main character for this one if you want me to be. Yes. Let's swap so I can be Dave. Okay. Let's be real. No, uh, let's be real. As much as you enjoy your new friends, they all seem a little lonely. Maybe, like, maybe they don't have any friends besides the ones that they talk to online. Is online friendship a reasonable alternative to a more traditional face-to-face -face relationship? Are relationships and, dare you say, families that you choose not just as important, if not more so, than those that are able to touch and feel? I don't have my aviators anymore. Damn it. Or Damn it. <laughs> I also said, like, in the intermission, I was like, I, should, I would feel like I should be wearing sunglasses if I was going to do Dave. Yeah, like, man, I had the wig, I had the aviators. I do have my cape. Ah. I do have my cape. I think I might be covered in <laughs> buttons, but... Oh my god. Do you have any, uh... Ex do you have any, uh delectable plush rump to help you get into character. I don't think he can hear me anymore. Shit. Become the Dave and the dr drive in. What? <laughs> that just sounds confusing. And somewhat painful. There we go. That'll do. There you are. There he is, folks. The Dave is returned. He's returned. And you know, you can't even, probably can't even see it anymore, but this was the gear shirt, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's him. Ugh. It's the lad. Fucking glasses All are right. falling off. Why do you have a cape? My friend who cosplayed Rose helped me make this cape to cosplay Dave. <laughs> I am not kidding when I say... Homestuck is the entire reason for my convention existence for like a good six years. Nice. <clears throat> Did she make it and then immediately mock you for wearing it? Absolutely not. No, it was it was very like Dang. um uh, wholesome and like a good moment of, of of friendship sharing to make a cosplay together. I mean, of course. I was just gonna say it's like you said your friend was Rose. Uh, <laughs> you felt more so than you made the touch feel. Damn, maybe getting maybe being a bit a too real. You decide not to think about it too hard. But if you're being honest with yourself, maybe you aren't terribly interested in the greater context of found family and interpersonal relationships in the instant message era. You've got a fever, and the only cure for this disease is called friendship. It's to mildly inconvenience a few teenagers. Also, there's no more mic buzz. That just stopped at one point. Hey! As much of a delight as it's been to make a young boy face his existential future, rob a woman of her boo stash, and then self-reflect about the value of contextual relationships, it's all felt a little heavy-handed. What you need is an emotional palate cleanser. There are two kids left on this tour de force, and both sound like they'd make exquisite friends. Time to go full-on easy mode here. You've heard so much about this guy, you feel like you've got this one in the goddamn bag. Do you? Do I, I, don't, think, I don't think you're actually ready for what the fuck is about to happen. With confidence, you zap yourself onwards. What am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I might have that shirt too. <laughs> Just immediately. <laughs> You're already here. Wherever here is, it is blisteringly hot. You nigh instantaneously regret your choice of apparel. Why did you instinctively put your hoodie back on over this robe gown? You wore the you wore the hoodie over the robe. Apparently, I would also like to point out 
just to confuse things even more. Um, let's see if I can find a way to show this real quick. <clears throat> because, you know, whenever you're doing a Homestuck thing, the only thing that matters is confusing everybody as much as possible. Uh-huh. If anybody remembers oh. uh, this motherfucker from Namco High... Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you yeah. Go. There you go. That is kind of the same character. That's... Yeah, that's <laughs> that character in a later part of the story... <laughs> Kind of. It's hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, he becomes orange and a bird. And a ghost. <laughs> One winged dumbass. You the mailman or male person? This must be Dave. Rose mentioned he talked a lot and as you start to explain, it becomes apparent that he is having this conversation at you, not with you. Wow, it is unbelievably humid person adjacent. Anyway, Egbert told me to show up eventually, which I never doubted for a second since one of the core tenets of the United States Postal Service is that you visit four extremely specific and spread out teenagers while sweating all over yourself. Practically a crime to not be increasingly moist while out here delivering letters on the roof of a sky rise, which as you know is the most effective and legal way to drop off a post. Climb here than a New England potluck and wander around on the roof with no package. <laughs> it is actually really cool how much this kid seems to talk at you, but you are barely listening. Has the sun always been that red? Has the sky always been that wavy? You all right? You are hardly all right. You tug at the collar of your soggy mess of a hoodie. This is an overwhelming oppressive heat. An almost impenetrable air fills your lungs as you try and take a series of shallower and shallower breaths. The world fades to white. Give me a sec, give me a sec. I just realized that I have to do something <laughs> to fix this. Oh God. Hold, hold. Holding. Working on, working on something here. <clears throat> oh, I had a cape. My computer is being incredibly slow about it because of course it is. <laughs> Why can't I right click it? Oh, bitch. That one. Can it work for me? I just realized that I think that wearing the cape might have fucked with your camera's auto balance or something because now everything just looks extremely white, it's including not, you. It's not auto balance, that's the thing. I turned that off so that it would stop delaying me and the sun has just come up a bit. Oh, okay. really like to get a hold of this fucking pick but okay oh, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna be if you're gonna be a pain about it then i can do this a different way oh. okay bam 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 there we go that'll yeah come on come on everything's being super slow <clears throat> super fucking Yay! slow come on computer i know the hotkey combo Bam. Water. That'll go right there. And we're gonna pop over here. We're gonna go bam. Bam. I wanted a different one, but a different one wasn't working. I'm gonna go with this. Hey. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lord. Weird that white caused it to go completely out. That's not what it's supposed to be at all. Jesus, come on. Well, that fucked up. Get the How about a different one? Color key instead of a chroma key. There we go. That's better. Bam. All right, cool. 
we can proceed. Okay. I have to make sure I keep my head in this spot. <laughs> Don't move. Ever. <laughs> it fits. <laughs> the world fades to white. As, as Dave changes his shades, I guess. When you wake up, you're sitting propped up on a cheap futon in front of a large television. A rough approximation of a person does an elaborate series of controlled falls, culminating in what you can only describe as skateboarding for assholes. On your left, Dave exists in a quantum state that is both somehow sitting and laying down, but <laughs> also neither. When th with the precision of a swift watchmaker, he deftly presses a series of buttons that makes the awful polygon man on screen T-pose and fall face forward into the ground. Oh, yup. Look at all the puppet ass in this room. Fucking mm. glorious. Hey, Cal. <sighs> Didn't miss you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Seconds later, his skateboard flops helplessly next to him. He doesn't look away from the screen as he speaks. So, uh, I guess you lived. It's not that I'm invested, but John might be sad. Classic John. You try and emulate his incredibly casual body language as you slide your body down to the futon. Your legs already barely reach the ground. All right, you know what? Here we go. Better. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that guy's a dork, but I taught him everything he knows. You ask him if you taught if he taught him how to be a dork. You affect a completely uninterested face as though the sickness of your third degree burn is not the single most exciting moment of your entire life. God damn. Owned in my own home. Owned within an inch of my life. I'm on the edge, reaching out that hand of friendship and this chucklehead long live the king's me. Thousands of gazelles trample my useless body. Jonathan Taylor Thomas's persona watches on. Who will raise Simba now? Who's going to teach him about combat? Philosophy. Life. By the way, I put your nasty sweatshirt in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> dope, 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 dope. <laughs> Jesus. What say? <laughs> dope. I'm dope. Not, I'm dope, not, dope, dope. Yeah, I'm gonna go with dope. Dope, 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 dope. You are definitely the sort of person who says dope often and casually. You tell him, dopely, that you are a person who is not caught up in the small details of decorum or personal propriety. In fact, it doesn't bother you at all that he took your only worldly possessions and tossed them into a shower while you were unconscious, but some light corpse looting among bros. Okay. While it dries, you can wear one of my bro shirts. He usually has a fresh stash in here. Dope. Tight. Sick. Nothing weird about hiding some shirts in the living room. Just gonna have a look-see. Holy shit, there are a lot of puppets in here. Yeah, dude, puppets own. Enough said. Bro's got the market cornered on puppet-based endeavors. Backed up against the wall like a feral beast kissing for some plush-oriented content. Little guy's probably just scared. Just wants to protect his nest and his mouth to mouth to feed his babies. The only just choicest puppet smut for a reasonable fee. Crashing the the fuck does any of that mean? You look back to David's on his phone. God damn, that is so <laughs> cool, actually. I don't want any excuses! 44 seconds! Uh, <laughs> motherfucking making me spend all my goddamn hard-earned cash up in here. Getting every one of those fucking lottery wins. All right. Here comes two more gift <laughs> subs for a couple lucky bastards. Hope you enjoy. Wait, what? Hope you enjoy puppet ass. It's coming along with these. Yeah, somebody pulled up a Xenoblade <laughs> quote and got the uh, got the second meme, which causes me to give out two gift subs. Ooh. Thanks, Palisade. <clears throat> As soon as the page up and fucking loads, I don't think it can handle how many puppets are on screen right now. Which is fair. Nobody can. <laughs> Dave can't hold it together either. Dave is just barely, barely maintaining, like, a facade of a personality right now. This is this is just you trying to give two gift subs on a Nokia phone yeah, right yeah, now. Much. This is what I'm imagining is happening. <laughs> Not entirely wrong. It's a lot of puppets. Yeah, just a just a handful, one or two or twenty. It's not even. You can tell that I'm poisoned by Homestuck because I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is not a lot of puppets. <laughs> oh man, I know that you know there's a, I know there's way more puppets in this household. It feels good. I've been here before. <laughs> I mean, <what? laughs> no, that's not what I was thinking, but <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> some might say too many. Some might say not enough. I don't want to meet the latter type of person. Escaverse and General Tank, congrats on your subs. Make good use of them. Oh, look, it's Shantae. It is. That is so cool, <laughs> actually. There's something weird about this whole setup that you just can't put your finger on. For one, you can't seem to find any secret shirts anywhere. It's all just puppets and plushes and DJ equipment. Oh my. Yeah, with my bro, you have to think of the potential for ironic payoff. That guy's always one step ahead. Just when you think you've got to figure it figured out, was when it was all some trap to make you think you've gotten his goat, but that goat is long gone. Makes you think maybe there never was a goat. Maybe it was some other barnyard animal all along. You've been duped into looking for a goat like some dumb asshole. Or maybe the goat gets you, really subvert the whole thing. You take a second to wonder if he's really using the term ironic correctly in this instance? The dictionary definition, yes, a goat getting you is the opposite of how the situation should go. Thank God you settled that. As you're about to reassure Dave that this joke tracks, you catch some movement in the corner of your eye. Was that a camera? It couldn't have possibly been a camera. Oh, no, there it is again. There is a camera coming out of the ice dispenser. It whirs softly as you approach, its mechanical eye trained on you. How long has that been? Things been watching you? Is this Dave's? You lean in to catch a closer look, but your foot catches on something. You fall flat on your face. Dave seems too engrossed in the conversation he's having on his phone to pay much mind, occasionally mumbling something out loud a few times before presumably typing it out. Yeah. You search for whatever it was that made you beef it so royally, you know, beef it, like fall down. That is a real phrase that humans say. The small tripwire stands taut a few inches off the ground. You must have, you must not have disturbed it enough to set off whatever contraption it's attached to apparently. Yeah, sometimes they're more of a psych out. You think, oh, fuck me, I definitely beefed it, which is a phrase that is real. And you sit there, waiting on bated breath, prepared to be fucked deep in velvety marionette dick. And it never comes. You go the rest of your day just waiting for the payoff for your dipshit mistake, and it never comes. You wake up in cold sweats for weeks, yearning for a release that will never find you, and if it hits you, you've been fucking bamboozled by the master yet again. There's no elaborate booby trap, no Rube Goldberg device set to enact a series of complicated shenanigans, ultimately resulting in being buried alive in Kermit the Frog's plush amphibious dong. Beautiful, really. Damn, bro, you <laughs> live like this? I mean, yeah, I guess. Keeps you on my toes. Heels never even met the ground. A prim ballerina with a head full of dreams and nothing to lose. God's gift of plies ripping a straight, nasty two or a layer for my adoring fans. They go apeshit for this sort of thing, but it's mostly just another day in the life of Don Sior Extraordinaire Dave Stradaire. Haven't fallen for a trap like that since I was a baby. Trained. Real rookie mistake, mailman. Looking tired, maybe. Trained. <laughs> Oh my god, is he mumble rapping at you? This is the greatest day of your life. God. More plush ass than a puppet lost and found. King Strider drops the illest fives because heavy's the crown. Rhyming puppet with puppet, calling that puppet rhymes. Killing all ventriloquist puppet on puppet crimes. He goes on like this for some time with what could be described as bars of a similar caliber. The narrative focus shifts to your inner thoughts out of necessity because it turns out writing raps is really hard. He isn't exactly great, but you're not really a rap expert, despite what your social media opinions might imply. Unless you count Hatch to Dance, which of course you do. Why wouldn't you? Wait. What? Wait, what does that mean? Why did you think that? The whole scenario feels a little weird and familiar to you. All these kids feel familiar to you. You learn something new about Dave and you feel like you already sort of know it? You can't place it. Despite having met Dave no less than half an hour ago, something feels just slightly off about him. Something about his actions feels so performative in nature, like he's pantomiming in front of an audience. As Dave continues to rap, you remember that you are in front of an audience. You cast a glance over to the camera, but also to the hundreds of stuffed little creatures staring at you with their lifeless eyes. Ugh. Amidst your revelation, we check back in on Dave because I'm getting paid to write this, so I should probably make the fucking jokes already. <laughs> Master of my tools, the ace hardware. I've got my tools, I've got my hose in a gardener. Y'all care. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the chaotic and surreal energy of this scene sends a shock of nervous energy down your spine. You feel alarmingly nude without the comfort and familiar warmth of your sweater. There's something about it that grounded you. Something that feels felt like nice. home. <clears throat> Dave concludes his masterpiece with an elaborate series of yeah's and uh, just to. Just as you see the camera turn away from him ever so slightly to focus on something else before retreating back to the ice dispenser. It almost makes it look a little bashful. That's kind of adorable, actually. Yeah, yeah. God. This 
despite the fanfic you've written in your head about a cool kid and his new best robot friend, the reality of the situation set, sets in. You have yet to make friends with this character, and it all has kind of felt surreal and weird to you. Maybe it's time to zap back and hard to reset this continuity to try again. What does that mean? Feels like I'm missing an important part of the puzzle here. Oh, did he read uh, uh, hear that? How does this work exactly? Sometimes you just narrate what you're thinking, dude. Kind of a baller move. Why has nobody called you out on this before now? <laughs> you put your hand on the counter to stabilize yourself and your fingers brush up against something clandestinely polo. Polo. Just barely poking out from beneath a pile of discount plush nobodies is a neatly retail folded shirt. <laughs> oh, oh, shit, you found it. <laughs> <laughs> this Go feels like a trap and I'm scared. <laughs> Choice is yours, Poseidon. <laughs> um. Well, apparently, since I have nothing else to wear and I'm just out in full nothingness, I'm gonna say wear the shirt. Right. Do not wear the no. Wear the shirt. I'm brave. Obviously, you're going to put the shirt on. You don't want to be the only one not wearing a cool shirt. You need some uh, privacy. I'm not sure where one layer of you ends and the other begins. Doubt the audience cares. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guessed being on camera like this is kind of fucking whack, you say. So, finally, your sprite even shows up on screen for a second. Yeah, that's right. We all went out. For we went all out for this one. <laughs> you were wondering if there was a place here that wasn't under constant surveillance. Like, how does this kid take a shit in peace? You know, everyone thinks it. You know, everyone's thinking it. Dope line of questioning that I'm sure the public is at large eager to know the answer to, but my room isn't wired up. No, about to get you fired up though. My eyes were multiplying with me. <laughs> Maybe not this second. <laughs> All right, damn. You accompany Dave down the hallway to his room. You hear the shower on, on as you pass the bathroom, and you peek in to see your hoodie and nice gown on the tile being uselessly wetted by a low pressure <laughs> stream. Okay. You're welcome, by the way. Dave motions you to go in first, giving you the privacy you need to change it to an extremely starched polo shirt and nothing else. This collar will not go down. <laughs> this is absolutely what someone in 2009 would think is fresh as hell. You look around the room for a bit. There are so many things in here. This would be a 13-year-old wet dream, but to you it just seems a little... much. Feels like this is a bunch of things someone thinks they should like. Let the fan art reflect that you've put on the shirt at this point. There isn't a mirror in here, but you can tell that this is someone out there. This is someone out there's idea of a look. <laughs> Let the record show. Not shirtless <laughs> at this point. <laughs> the door opens. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the logo. Uh, the door opens and Dave is standing there, but not walking in. He's leaned up against the doorframe, sipping in juice. Where'd he get a juice? What the fuck? Yes. Uni's the boss. Uni is the boss. Who the fuck is Uni? <laughs> Do you just have audio popping out of your the sides of your head at random? Hallway juice, my guy. Hallway juice. What, you don't keep food stuff stashed around your house? What do you do when you get hungry? N no, that's not it. You mean you usually just keep it in the fridge or whatever? Too obvious. Someone help this useless clown. You assure Dave that you have met many clowns in your day, and only some of them were useless. Name one. You... can. Why did you say that? Clowns are awful, everyone knows this. Of course. Guess he's got you there. You know, despite the overwhelmingly plush decor of the rest of the house, there's a distinct lack of puppets in here. That's more of a bros thing. Not that they aren't. Deliriously slick. It's just a whole hospital ward full of the illest children you've ever seen. Each one more up to pup than last. Up to pup? Yeah, pup. Like puppets. You're gonna be honest. It doesn't really seem like his heart's in it. How you mean? Well, it's just that he doesn't really seem to be all into the puppets. Feels a little performative. Well, I guess I got my own stuff I'm into. Like if I were to in rank it on all, one to ten. There are a great many paintings <laughs> depicting all manner of hells. <laughs> But I think real hell might be closer to something like this. Absolutely, fucking lutely man. If you've never been in a situation like this where you're constantly under threat of your bro's puppet horde smashing its ass into your 
face and eyes, even in the safety of your own room? Man, of course it's a hell. What fuck do you think I live like? <laughs> if I were to rank it 1 to 10, I'd say puppets are probably a solid 7. You got this kid on the ropes, just one more push. In fact, you'd even go so far as to say that the puppet thing sort of sucks? It's extremely weird. The cameras, the hiding things like an animal, it all seems a little, you know, whack. For a while, he just seems to look at you almost as if he's sizing you up. There's a long stretch where Dave doesn't break eye contact with you as he finishes his cute little juice and crumples it up. He takes an ambitious shot at the trash can and misses by about seven and a half feet. Damn, I could have sworn I had game. You're throwing me off, mailman. Yes, that is correct. You're a faithful employee of the Postal Service. I mean, I definitely believe you, but let's say I didn't. Let's say I had a cool friend who, even though they're too cool to care about details like this, they were a little skeptical of the whole situation. Maybe they'd want some proof you are who you say you were before they let you get any closer to their friends. Just throwing that hypothetical out there. What proof, what proof could you possibly need? Say the oath. What? The oath. The male oath. Uh, look, the thing about that is... I mean, unless you aren't really a mailman. Behind his sunglasses, Dave's eyes shift ever so slightly to what you might describe in a less immediately harrowing situation as a moderately priced-looking mall katana mounted to his wall. You realize that maybe now isn't the best time to come clean about your impeccable ruse. I can't believe you have managed to put yourself in mortal peril yet again. Wordlessly chuckle and shake your head. Oh, the situations you get yourself into. <laughs> Dave, not privy to your private thoughts for once, looks on. Why, of course you can recite the mailman oath, you say with a confidence that is as misplaced as it is unfounded. You perk up. Now is the time to shine. Maybe it's a pop collar, but you are feeling good about this one. You got this. You have lied to tons of kids. One more and it will be smooth sailing from here on out. You open your mouth and there's a brief moment where everything feels like it's going to be okay. You immediately start sobbing and crumple into the disgust into a disgusting mess <laughs> on the floor. Oh, uh, fuck. Wow, oh, oh okay, uh, Jesus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you're, you're not a rich man. You never were. You don't, you're not a real man at all. You're a fraud. You don't even know how much that's cost. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus, just... Okay, it's, uh, it's gonna be right there, uh... <laughs> Dave squats down next to your deflated body and pats you a little awkwardly on what he assumes is your shoulder. You say you're sorry you tricked him, you just wanted to impress him because John said he was so cool. It's, uh, it's fine, I guess. Fuck, dude. Just get a hold of yourself. He, he tries to get up. But you are desperately clinging to his shirt, confessing everything. Confess to me. You later, you commit. Partner. <laughs> 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 Dave picks you up by the collar and chucks you out his window. Bye, partner. Had enough of this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this friend empty. Ye. Look, my guy. We uh. <clears throat> we all make mistakes. Please stop whatever this is. Pretty sure you're harmless, and I don't think you actually killed anyone with your ass or were ever an accessory to burning down an alien mall or whatever insane shit you just said. Yeah, you kind of caught up, caught up in the moment and just started say, <laughs> saying made-up shit. You ask Dave if he's mad at you. Nah, dude. Get up. Dave helps you back up on your feet. You come clean in an only slightly more controlled and dignified way this time. You explained how there are these huge gaps in your memory that you somehow ended up with these abilities that let you traverse space, time, and sometimes even reality itself. Dave doesn't say much for a change. It doesn't seem like he's listening at first, but you think maybe he's just, he just has one of those faces. All right, let me get this straight. <clears throat> one day you just appeared in a suburb. No memories except that you have some mysterious teleportation power. You dig through some unsuspected chumps mail looking for clues. And then through some ridiculous universal happenstance, you just so happen to stumble upon the most gullible fucking dork in the universe. My friend Tim. Also, I'm there via text. Egbert gives you a list of friends to visit. Out of all the choices available to you, myself included, you go see Rose first. Rose fucking Lalonde. Even though we built up such a good rapport when I told John you weren't a real mailman. Called it, BTW. Your first instinct is to visit the most heavy-handed of all of us for some light kinship. Power move, I guess. Man, man out here wave dashing for friendship. <laughs> Can't even spare a neutral A for old Striker, eh? <laughs> Won't even back in the corner and spam your range attack for the D-man. Tragedy in two acts. Both acts are titled Betrayal. 
you definitely understand what is being said and absolutely don't have to ask your friends what some cool video game words are. You are 100% not pulling the boldest. How do you do, fellow kids? The world has ever seen. Besides, is that really the thing to be focusing on right now? You fucking wound me, mailman. Of course it is. Nothing is more important to me than this. To say the most most humans only use 10% of their brains because I'm using 90% of it to think how dare you. So anyway, you can really go anywhere. See anybody you want. Sounds nice. For all but a moment, the act drops and you see the corners of his mouth tighten a little. The fading afternoon light filters through the sunglasses at just enough of an angle to see his eyes shift ever so slightly toward the window. These subtle movements would surely be lost on most. If you weren't so focused on trying to read him, or even just slightly further away, you may have missed it yourself. There was almost a loneliness in his voice. It must be hard to live here by yourself so far away from the people who care about you. It's possible that you've been so focused on trying to blindly make friends that you've forgotten that in front of you is a real living person. You can't help but wonder if there is something you can do. You said you can take people with you, right? Hold up, I'm just gonna go to the save menu real quick. Like if you could teleport mm -hmm. John around. Would that work with anybody? Oh, this is it. The path of this kid's heart is clear as day. <laughs> Fuck what you said just now. That friendship juice is just so close you can practically fucking taste it. Try not to look excited affecting Dave's cool persona as you say, Fuck yeah, you can take people with you. Just go about your fingernails because for some reason that is what you do when you're acting cool. This works to the full extent that it coming from someone who not but 7 minutes and 32 seconds earlier was rolling around on the floor damp with their own tears. Did he have some place in mind? Yeah. I mean, I got some ideas I could bounce off you, I guess. How do you feel about... Shh, shh, shh. With a swift finger to his mouth, you cut him off. He doesn't seem to like that very much, but you still consider it a successful maneuver. There's no need for words between friends. You know just where he wants to go. Just think really hard about it. Think about where you want to be, Dave. Think about what is important to you. Think about what you really want. It will be more magical this way. Friendship is magic, after all. You just made that up right now. Don't look it up. Damn. Guess that's true. Closes his eyes and you put a hand on his shoulder. This is it. Putting your trust in the magic of friendship, you focus this power externally as much as you're able. Flashes of distant but somehow familiar imagery course through you. The quiet stillness of the suburbs, the smell of the forest, the heat of an apartment roof, the ocean breeze. You extend it outward as much as you are able. This is his rodeo. You are merely the... V... Hick... Cole. What the fuck? Oh, fuck yes. The two of you stand near a sign that says, Please wait to be seated. A very cheery hostess has a brief exchange with Dave and he ushers the two of you to an open table. Oh, hell fucking yes. Is this an Applebee's? There's no mistaking it. About to get my motherfucking breadstick on. <sighs> this is absolutely an olive garden. Fuck yeah it is. When you hear your family, dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still new to this. You can't really seem to detect any irony in his voice. You thought for sure he'd want to go to see his friends. You thought you had him figured out. First and last mistake, mailman. But you'll learn. I'm a mystery. Get the history. Fucked with the plot of my flow so hot they leave you looking blistery. Racially ambiguous, my rhymes contiguous at the OG with my homie where the Brits just are continuous. You know what? Fuck it. You just let him go for a while. You don't even know if the last one rhymed, but fuck <laughs> it. You, if you aren't charmed by this little bastard. <laughs> you lean back in your chair and just absorb it all. Sitting in the worst restaurant imaginable with your new rapping teen friend while the other patrons do their best to ignore his incredible rhymes. Save is absolutely a shit post. He's a living shit post. <laughs> He's such a sh Jesus. After a short while, Dave abruptly stops freestyling and you open your eyes. Oh fuck, you know what time it is? No, your sprite doesn't have a watch drawn on it. Breadstick 30, no watch necessary. Fuck me, I love breadsticks. I never talk about it. This is a very real and hidden character trait that nobody knows about me. <laughs> well, that sounds like a very real and hidden character trait that nobody knew about him. And we are certainly not finding this out now because of a series of seemingly unrelated events that possibly changed the continued continuity of this universe, allowing these sorts of otherwise narratively unimportant traits to shine through. <laughs> wow, he is really going to town on those breadsticks. Maybe this is all friendship needs to be, spending some quality face time with a solid bro and just absolutely decimating some bottomless breadsticks at a bad chain Italian restaurant. Maybe the real lesson here is friendship doesn't have to be a grand gesture or high adventure. Maybe the real friends... I understand you're having a moment, but I'm absolutely going to eat the breadsticks if you don't stop talking about whatever friendship means to you. 
<laughs> yeah, man, whatever you want. <laughs> Get that press. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm crying. They're so good. My family banned Olive Garden for eight years. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> I kind of want to see how they it. fail, but we've been going for two and a half hours. <laughs> oh. All right. We gotta fuck up Dave once. <laughs> oh man, fine. That's fair. Close the menu. <laughs> what even like? Go back. Go Wait, back into it? it. There's like two choices. Two choices. Always two choices. <laughs> we either. All right. So we can either put the shirt. We can. We can not put on the shirt, or we can question him putting the clothes in the shower. Which one do you want? Uh, I guess I just make it fast. The, the shower. All right. This might not make it faster. You might have just set us onto an completely alternate timeline that has its own choice. Well, you asked me. Yeah, it smelled, so I toss it in there. Ran the hot water. You can thank me later. Won't somebody need that? You don't want to put anyone out. You've already taken up so much of their hospitality. Also, you don't think that's how you're supposed to wash clothes. Nah, my bro's out for a while. It happens sometimes. Probably puppet related. Whoops. 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 <laughs> he avoids laundry m minefield by opting for the nuclear option. Though you guess that makes sense. There are a lot of puppets around which strike you as extremely normal and reasonable and not even a little whack. Yeah, puppets rule and a story. Shit, close the book on that one. Time for Betty Bye, kid. Little man about to get his 8 to 10 on snug as a bug in a fucking rug. Turn the fucking tight as can only be his way to slumberland. Emo who? Never fucking heard of him. Shit, hold on. He sits up to fish something out of his pocket. Ah, a palm. A, sorry, a phone. He gets a phone from his pocket. You're not sure what you were thinking. As a perfectly normal human being from a 100% real and tangible Earth, you know what a cell phone is. But, wait, is that a, wait, what is that, a first gen? Yikes. Was he meds? He ignores your jab <laughs> and you pretend not to be reading over his shoulder. Yeah, I'm calling him out. Uh, though it probably could not be more obvious than you are, or that you are. Hi, did you meet the mailman? Hey, my guy, we've gone over this time and time again. How do I put this in terms you can understand? Have you ever met a mailman in your life? Even in that shitty cosmos Wait, are they using... love? <laughs> Wait, hang on. Are they using... Why do they not have the abbreviations? I don't know. Okay, whatever. <laughs> even in that shitty costume flick, you love the dude has a decency to at least wear the outfit. I knew you watched it! No, I never waste my precious time watching even a single one of the Z-list garbage you try to wreck me into state some stone cold facts. I just read an outline and browsed a few reviews so I see what people are saying. I don't know, sounds like that probably took a lot more time and effort than just watching the movie itself. What I'm saying is this isn't a mailman. I don't even think this is a person. You have to trust, you, you have thrust a person in, styled entity into my life under the alluring guise of partial delivery. Which if I'm understanding this right, this clown isn't even very good at it on account of how bad they bungled the only delivery that mattered. At least Lalonde had the good sense to be skeptical of this entire absolute fucking tomfoolery. You dick, the mailman is cool. John, I can't what? express this enough. You would know cool if it bit you right in the ass. Can you imagine? What? No. no. The dopest person ever you met chomping away, just really getting up in there, ice cold and ear deep in a king's beast of ass. Title drop. What the hell are you talking about? Try and keep up, Egbert. This will be on the quiz. Man, Dave has a lot of issues that he needs working out. <laughs> Suddenly, there's a lot of stuff from the comic that I'm thinking about. And I'm like, okay, that makes... A bit more sense now. <laughs> Just a little bit. He looks uncharacteristically startled as he glances back in your direction to find, that he, find you only a few inches away, adamantly reading his private conversations with a friend. Jesus Christ, you're like a cat. How? How much of that did you see? You definitely didn't see him having a playfully flirtatious chat with a longtime friend, if that's what he's asking you. Dave <clears> desperately <throat> tries to refocus on his game hijinks. He makes his character, who you can see he has named Tony Kao do what he could what, do what could be described as some insane flips and shit. Masterful. There's nothing at all flirtatious about two bros discussing eating ass. Just being straight oh as two God. arrows who are also straight. I mean, how would that even work? It wouldn't, that's how. That's all there really is to say about that. 
You reassure him that it's okay to be honest about his feelings. You're not here to judge him. John seems very nice. They would be cute together. Together? No. <laughs> Just like how? No, don't tell me. I actually don't give even a single shit about this entire line of thought. You might not have picked this up, but I'm definitely 100% not a homosexual. Pretty much crawling in moist voluptuous hose on the regular. Uh... The only thing thicker than the irony in this atmosphere is the denial. Wait, <laughs> hoes are real? Hell yeah, hoes are real. And they're damp? Shit, it's like I gotta start at square one with this hapless asshole. What school do you go to? Uh, the utter astonishment you feel at this earth-shattering revelation sends your consciousness for a spin, but you manage to steal yourself. This isn't your first tough customer. That is not a sentence. <laughs> you tell Dave that hose is a gender neutral term. Anyone can be a hoe if they believe in themselves. Hoe like behavior knows no limits, no master. Punctuation is for hoes, bros. Nice! Despite just learning they were real mere moments ago, you were confident that to be a hoe is to be free. Oh. It's pretty dope, I guess. It's not. Hmm. It's not like I ever thought of it. Not like I never thought of it. I mean, for ironic payoff, obviously. Can you imagine the look on his face? His best bro coming up to him with some dire news. I look at him, eyes red with tears. I put a hand on his shoulder and say, John, not to alarm you, but I'm gay now. And your coolest dipshit wiles have finally won me over. Nah, nah that sucks. <laughs> Give this poor boy. <laughs> his speech has become even quicker than normal as he stands and paces frantically around the apartment, completely abandoning his poor tone. I mean... And this is purely hypothetical, if I liked anybody, uh, which I don't on account of being too fucking smooth to tie myself down, it will probably be another one of my friends. Uh, uh, you don't know her, she's not from around here, so that basically means I can't have a thing. A thing. <laughs> For John, case closed. By unanimous decision, the jury finds a favor that offended me. <laughs> Seems to you like he's got a lot to think about and that maybe this is a little heavy for the first meeting. You already feel emotionally exhausted. No fucking way, we're in this for the long haul, partner. We are entrenched in this shit. You and me are fighting on the front lines of is he isn't he World War One? Trips are spilling over the embankment, armed with the youth of various literature and pamphlets. I'm already learning so much about myself. Oh, uh, is that good? The enemies at the gates, my sexuality and an air support is nowhere to be seen. If I don't make it, tell my wife or my husband, maybe I died like I lived, completely baller in every conceivable way. This conversation train has not just gone off the rails, but it is crashing headfirst into the nearest village. Just some unsuspecting Hamlet falling prey to this out of control ride. This is no longer a conversation you have any say in. You, you desperately did. look around the room for anything else to talk about. So, uh, puppets, right? No, 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 no. You fucked up, male man. You opened the floodgates of introspection. We are balls deep in this discourse waters and there's nobody to blame but yourself. He stops pacing to look contemplative. His voice lowers to a mumble. Is he still talking to you? Does he still want to talk about this or not? Is it? It's nearly impossible to tell. Okay, now hear me out. <clears throat> Do I have to come up with a gay name now, or can I still be Dave? I'm thinking maybe Gabe, but let's not kid ourselves. That's the amateur choice. Obviously, my full title would be Gabe Strider Dick Rider. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> There's got to be a better way than this. <laughs> You're so tired. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Happy Pride Month, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <Ep Scott. laughs> well this is a hell of a way to fail i love it <sighs> this is not the conversation i was expecting no not you fucking own up to this mtt you never expect any conversation to go the way it does in this fucking series every I single don't. page ends the way you didn't expect no, I mean, you're not wrong, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've never once claimed to be like, oh, I know exactly how this is going to go, but it's just like it always still catches me off guard. <laughs> we're go we're, do we're that, going that's again. That's my secret. I just, I expect nothing, so I'm always surprised. Doing it again. <laughs> Gabe Strider, Dick Rider. <laughs> Please. Who can we, who can we raid with that as the raid message? <laughs> Somebody who kind of knows what they're in for with this. We're not wearing the shirt, but that's definitely the message. Dave Strider, Dick, Gabe, Gabe Strider, Dick Rider. Oh, oh, so the asses were about the puppets from the title. Yeah, that's, I mean, I knew that from the beginning, but. Was it? Was it really? Because I'm pretty sure that the asses Shit. were um, talking about 
John's ass, was it not? That's what got the whole conversation Shit. going. Shit, you're fucking right, damn it. Uh, yeah, I'm not wearing the shirt. Yeah, don't wear the shirt. Actually, you think you're fine as is. No reason to shake it up with yet another outfit we'll have to eventually pay someone to draw. Let's take a second, reel in it for a little bit. What the fuck is going on here? Isn't this, like, really messed up? No, what's messed up? Is how you deny my hospitality like this. I offer you someone else's property that you have to find hidden among countless lifeless puppet corpses. And this is the thanks I get? Real cold, mailman. Damn, maybe I'll wear the shirt to protect me from this chill. Ah, uh, enough! Okay. Like, why isn't he in school? It's the middle of April. It's spring break, bro. Besides, so I only subscribe to the School of Hard Knocks. Also, several YouTube channels and periodicals. So, pretty sweet deal over here, actually. You know he isn't really like this. You know he doesn't like living like this. Oh, damn, is that true? What am I like? Apparently, we've got the foremost expert in Dave lore here. PhD in Strider Dynamics. It's the first day of school, and I'm here in class eager to learn. Got my pencil out and my freshest fit on. Got my Duke New Trapper Keeper with the Lisa Frank Dolphins on it. Look at them, they're smiling like assholes. One blue, one pink, so we know it's not gay. Poor bastards don't know they're a cartoon. Saddest story I ever heard. I'm not gonna lie. I genuinely thought that I saw the camera move in the background, <laughs> even though this is just a still image, and I freaked the fuck out for a split second. <laughs> The little camera switches its focus from Dave back to you, gauging your reaction. Maybe it did. <laughs> yeah, look, it's not oh, there. God, it. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Catching you by it's surprise, him. bro. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, ignoring it, you assert that you aren't trying to say you know him, just that... That what? Okay, clearly you've struck some sort of nerve here, but... Nah, we're good. Tell me more about my situation. You really have been spending time with Rose, haven't you? Got me all figured out. Don't worry if you look like... Don't worry if you gotta look at the Wikipedia article for abandonment issues or whatever. I can wait. Okay. There is no Wikipedia page on abandonment issues. Despite how flat his voice is coming out, his body language has made a telltale shift. He's standing leaned up against the back of the futon. His hands are in his pockets. It would almost seem like he was sulking if he weren't so convinced he wants to kick your ass. Uh, that was not okay. <laughs> I, at the edge of your vision, you sense some movement. You didn't catch it exactly, but you're convinced it was there. You look over there and there's nothing to be seen. Perhaps another hidden camera? There's something unsettling about being watched this whole time. Nice. Not nice. There it is again. Every now and every now and then, your eyes catch the faintest presence of something moving just out of sight. This whole place feels like it's faintly shifting around. Amid scanning the room, a particularly fucked up looking puppet catches your attention. These little shits are everywhere, but this awful little man's stare stops you at heart just for a moment. His cold eyes pierce you. His plastered smile judges you. It asks if you want to see it do a flip. Y yes you look at it you look at it as briefly as possible if for no other reason than to note how unsettling it is before looking back at Dave you what the fuck what oh that's just Cal Cal's a realist he certainly seems real to you you could have sworn he just moved around on his own <laughs> yeah man he does that don't think about it too hard See, this is what you mean. It's not that deep. Look, I know you got some hero complex or something. I'm gonna swoop in and save these kids from themselves. Well, bad news, kid. That's not what this is, and heroes ain't real. John, I understand, but fooling Rose, too? The insane tricks this guy must have pulled. Davis shifted his weight forward. While his voice has not risen above a low mumble, this is enough of a tell to know that maybe you should back off. This friendship thing is tougher than you thought. You're still on about that, huh? Look, I'm no expert on friendship, minus the fact that I absolutely am. But you ever think maybe coming into someone's home and fucking with their day-to-day -day life is a little rude? Just a hypothetical. As per normal, I'm stone cold unbothered by this turn of events. Stoic bassian in the- Sorry, but did you just say stoic? No, I said stoic. What? Uh, yeah. Stoic, like, unmoved. Stoic. Does he- Stoic, like, unmoved stoic. Oh, do you mean stoic? I mean, I guess. Ah, oh, peace, you've done it now. You weren't trying to embarrass him. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> you try and comfort him by saying that it's okay if he's never heard anybody say the word before. Maybe he's only seen it in text. This is the most, like, th this can't be canon because this picture has never happened ever. It just <laughs> did. No. 
No, this 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 doesn't happen. This is not a real face that Dave can make. <laughs> this is clearly the work of fan fiction. What do you think this is, motherfucker? <laughs> he frowns and goes quiet. This does not seem to be helping. The kid is completely shut off now. You try and bring up the puppets again. No dice. You even pretend to be super jazzed about Cal or whatever the hell that thing's name was that seemingly shadow stepped around the apartment. Wow, so cool. Nothing. Dave takes out his phone and begins texting. <clears throat> ah, is that about you? Oh, Beans, is he telling your new friends how much you beefed it? Oh, this could ruin everything. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and this is the most desperate time you can recall. The friendship is on the line. Cal continues to phase in and out like a poorly animated anime character moving so fast you can't keep up. You take a few steps toward Dave. Gotta get him out of here, and you know just where to take him. About half a second in, you stealth mission, you hit about half a second into your stealth mission, you clumsily step on a puppet and make a pathetic and it makes a pathetic squeak. I feel like I have it. Uh shit. Uh Dave stops for a second, but after a few moments, returns to text and sees Wow, I am completely fucking up. Uh, everything. Yeah, just uh, like this friendship, bro. S sneak up carefully. <laughs> nah, shit. Dave stops for a second, but after a few moments, returns to text and gets the speed of sound to whoever it is on the other end. Jeez, and crackers, you can hear the notification sounds popping off. Whoever it is is responding back. You can't waste any more time. You teleport to him. As silently as you can. Besides you, Cal's disgusting limp body flops haphazardly on top of a shelf. Guess he's done? No time for this. You slowly reach out your hand. Time to get out of here and fix this. A large adult hand grabs you by the wrist. You turn to see it belongs to a muscular man in pointy sunglasses who you wouldn't exactly describe as a twink, not exactly a honk, but most certainly not a bear either. In fact, why don't you why are we talking about this for a second? Oh shit! Before you can begin your externally important debate, you are flung unceremoniously out of a high-rise apartment complex window. As you free fall, you think, maybe he was more of a twonk. God damn it. Hmm. It's gonna take some <laughs> serious consideration. <laughs> Alright. I just noticed the puppet from Saw. Yeah. That has been the uh, the Strider experience. Thank you all for uh riding the ride today. The rider. Yeah. This is this has been the uh Gabe Strider Dick Rider experience. 